And welcome and thanks for joining us for the Bowls New Zealand YouTube coverage of the Somerset National Singles and Pairs. We're at the Browns Bay Bowling Club as the headquarters for this huge tournament, a great national tournament. And Alex Reid, great to have you with me as uh, the expert commentator as we look at the pairs here at the Browns Bay Bowling Club. And it's going to be a, a very competitive day as uh, you've explained to me off air how this is really an open tournament. There's yep. no seedings, it's just luck of the draw who you could actually come up against in the section play through to, uh, well, it helps you get through to the knockout play uh, later on in a few days' time. Absolutely, it's one of the special things about uh, the Somerset National singles pairs, um, fours and mixed pairs that, that we run over the season. They've always been an open event. Any affiliated bowler can enter them and you're just randomly drawn into your sections and post-section is the same. So it makes for a good few days bowling, Dave. And if people want to follow the uh, results, well, where can they go for those? Uh, yes, they're available in lots of places, but your best bet is to go to the Bowls New Zealand website, which is bowlsnewzealand.co.nz, uh, and there there will be everywhere plastered uh, the results for the Somerset Nationals, which are hosted on Bowls Hub Aotearoa. If you follow our social media channels, Facebook has the results there as well. And uh, the conditions, well, Alex, uh, blustery is probably the best bet, the nicest way of putting it. Uh, it's a lot cooler in Auckland than what it has been over the last few days. Probably the coolest day for well, a couple of weeks. And uh, really having to uh, hold down the cameras and everything else as well. Because uh, the wind is going across the greens. It's not actually coming from the ocean side. Browns Bay Club, very close to the beach in Browns Bay. It's uh, kind of swinging across. There has been a little bit of, uh, I guess, spitty rain earlier today. At the present time, it's okay though, but you can see the flowers in the background. Well, they're showing a little, and the t shirts there, we can see them just yeah. on and off, blustery gusts of wind coming through. Well, this one's uh, actually a great uh, bowl to start with that we're watching here. I think we are on the ninth end of 18, I believe, Alex. Uh, we'll check that out in just one moment. We've just had a change of ends here on this uh, ring. Uh, Alex, we've got a huge number of uh, pairs. Uh, well, wow, so how many clubs are we using? Uh, we're using about 20 clubs. Just quickly before we get to that, though, Dave, I suppose we should say who's in front of us. Um, so we're watching two teams of peers, as is obvious. Yeah. <laughs> this is obvious one. There's <laughs> two, two teams of peers. <laughs> State the obvious, Alex. And there's uh, David Gordon skipping uh, and Basil Dynan playing oh, lead in the grey shirts. The grey, yep. And then the red here we've got from uh, Auckland. Is it uh, Hunter's... Uh, Papatoe Hunter's Corner. That's right. That's right. And this is uh, Panapa. Penny uh, Panapa. Uh, Penny Panapa and uh, Pale Luca. That's right. There we go. So just looking now at Panapa and uh, Luca, they're in the red shirts. And uh, this may turn a little bit. And uh, the wind may have dropped on this one, but I think it just goes short completely. But we've got so many rinks in, uh, in action at the moment. So you may actually feel as though you're seeing a different bowl come in <laughs> and it it's just yeah. that we've got so many i think uh, what are we using we're using six greens at browns bay which by your calculations means around about uh, 20 rings lots. or something like that there's lots here there's we've got 205 entries in the men's peers um so that means there's a hundred ish rinks in play uh over auckland and north harbour today and tomorrow and just looking now yes we are on the 9th of 18. And and a close game. You can see it, a very close one. This is Panapa now. Oh, just a little gust of wind there, getting back off the mat. Looked like he was winding up for an aggressive shot, uh, but maybe he was just winding up. We'll see in a second. Let's say on his backhand side. No, just a draw bowl. And you can see there. A lot of bowls have been, the other wind's going from the right to the left on the screen. It probably has contributed to a lot of the bowls finishing to the left as we see it. And that bowl there just a little bit overplayed. And he doesn't look that chuffed, Dave. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm fairly annoyed by that one, particularly being so close as well. So how many contests, clashes, matches, games would you have to win to actually make it through post-section to the knockout phase of the uh, of the tournament? Yep, good question. So we call um, uh, uh, the tournament's divided into section play and post-section. So section play for the peers takes place over two days of three games per day. So this is day one of section play. 
game two, so they've got four more games to go. If you win four games out of the six or more, you qualify for the randomly drawn post section, and usually a so that's around about sixty four, around about sixty four. Yeah, that's yeah. sort of around a sixty four. So it means sixty four, thirty two, sixteen, eight, four, two, six or seven games to win a um, a national title in post section. And I'm assuming that we have uh, some pairs that actually go through unbeaten all the way. Yeah, yeah, the, we do. Um, there's often a saying though in bowls: you sort of you want to lose your game in section play, <laughs> as opposed to to post section. So there's uh, there are ones that go through unbeaten, but it's nice to be challenged. So right, you sort of, of you'd rather have a challenging section play. Well, one of those teams that uh, has an opportunity to do very well is actually our next uh, contest which will be uh, Mike Kernahan and Roger Stevens. Uh, they are what you'd call a, a, a good team that by their reckoning should make it out of uh, post section. Yeah they're expected to qualify and they would they be they're expected to feature really. I'd put them in the sort of top 10 top 10 pairings that are attending uh, this nationals out of 205 so well, now be, that I'd you've mentioned surprised. top 10 who would be your number one? Well, that's a great question, Dave. You're going to have to think about that. We can come back to you on that one as we get ready yeah. now for the uh, 10th end of 18. And we'll just uh, check on the score been updated here in uh, just a moment. In the meantime, uh, we'll see the Jack come on down. And you can see the other rink next door. And uh, you've got about uh, 30 seconds of me uh, talking, Alex, before you can come up with your number one and two seeds or who you'd have it. Thank you. Uh, and that, uh, that Jack's gone wide, so we're going to move that one in. And uh, you can certainly see this is going to be one of the issues today is uh, that gusts of wind just uh, putting the bowlers off a little bit. We're getting the score update in the background. And uh, let's have a look now at uh, Luca and his white bowl. How close is that one going to go? Yeah, he played three good bowls last well, year, didn't he? We this saw... one's pretty good. Oh. It was, it was accurate, but probably a bit too strong, wasn't it? Yeah, he sort of would say he's overplayed that bowl, but I think um, on the previous end, and we see there the scoreboard now is 12-8 uh, to Panapa and Luca. I think three of those bowls were Luca's, those white bowls. Yep. Um, so he must be settling down into his, his work. I believe that Gordon and Dinan got off to quite a good start. I had a check at the score a bit earlier on. They were 8-1 or 8-2 up, and I think they probably... It appears as if they've got stuck on the eight points and have been overtaken at the moment by Parapa and Luca with that uh, eight ends left to go. And uh, now you've had your time, Alex. So who are some of the, the top pairings uh, from your <laughs> reckoning? We gave I, you around about 30 seconds. Yeah, you did give me about 30 seconds. I think uh, you can't go past the last year's winners, which are Andrew Kelly and Seamus Curtin. Right. Um, two very good players. Andrew Kelly went to the Commonwealth Games, Seamus Curtin knocking on the door. And they defeated Gary Lawson and Tony Grantham, who coincidentally uh, I would put in the top few as well. In last year's final, uh, there's uh, the team that won the national peers last time. It was in Auckland, Lance Pascoe and Jamie Hill in the men's peers. They've teamed up again. They'll go close. Uh, like we said, Mike Kernahan and Roger Stevens will go close. And there's a smattering of others. Some really good combinations. The Nationals is, a, is the only time, really, uh, when a lot of these players from different regions get an opportunity to, to play bowls together. As we see, Dinan there hunting for the jack and overplaying his bowl. So we've had three overplayed now. And it almost says to you that just tone it down a little bit. Let's see what uh, Luca can do on this one. On his backhand. He's hunting this one down. We see one clap from the skip, so that's a good sign usually. It is slower, so that may be of uh, benefit. Yeah, this is a good stuff here from Luca. Well, you spoke it. That's a brilliant oh. bowl. Great shot. <laughs> oh. Oh. And it, it, doesn't it help so much when when you know that you've made it difficult for your opponent when they can't physically see it? Yeah, it does. You, we talk about hiding the jack from the mat end so yep. that when you get down to, to play your bowl, you look and all you can see is this bowl staring you in the face. So, Dinan, giving this one half a chance to be fair, Dave. Look at this oh, come back. Much better. That's a great correction there from Dinan. Good bowl. I think it's just realised, whether it was from watching uh, Luca or whether it was just from perseverance, uh, that he didn't need to put so much on it. Yeah, and sometimes sometimes you don't mean to, to be fair. it's uh, We spoke about 
at the top of the show the conditions and you can see the winds blowing around a little bit and the browns bay greens we call them quite fast so they're quite slick it doesn't there's not much difference so that's the traditional for browns bay is to be fast pretty greens, fast yeah yeah and what about just a little bit of rain this morning we've we've gone from a heavy uh november and i guess beginning of december to the last week or so it's been very limited rain and pretty much stinking hot yeah new zealand's a bit or our greens are a bit uh, weird dave <laughs> uh, so with That's light with light rain for whatever reason the maniatoto and starweed green so this is a maniatoto one they tend to speed up with light rain so for whatever reason how does that make I sense i don't know but it's true that they get a little bit quicker with light rain and then they'll slow down once the water starts right. pulling um, so uh, the rain wouldn't have impacted the speed of the green this morning as we see Panifa here on his backhand looking to add to the bunch and he's done that Oh, what a shot there. That's brilliant oh, stuff. How did it even fit in there? I don't know. <laughs> Someone needs to be chalking it. We chalk touches. So who are we thinking is the closest one on this one now? It changes. They don't seem to be too concerned about it at the moment. Yeah, it's, uh, Luke has just added to the count there, so he'll be sitting, with his team will be holding three. And Flat Flash, which is his nickname here, on the back end looking for some movement. And just missing the head entirely. That's disappointing as a skip with your first bowl. You want to try and uh, make a change. So he's three down on the head. So he was playing with aggression. If the jack is killed, Dave, so that means if it goes out either side of the rink, the end is replayed and no one scores any points at the national event. So what's Panapa going to do here? Well, he knows that Gordon is going to be aggressive. So... <laughs> A little bit of a dance, a little bit of a double check. I love it. I think he's just going to try to put another ball close, to be honest. Too or much. maybe a block. No. I think that one just came out of his hand funny, to be honest. And we're going to see aggress aggression here again from Gordon on his backhand. He's given that one a look as we see the ball. Oh, he's got rid of one of them, so he's cut the count down. Is that, that going to be a value? Well, it's in a slight improvement because if we look at the head, the bowl at 5 o'clock is Gordon and Dinan's bowl, so that's third shot. So at the moment he's two down to the white one and the blue one, mm. and he was three down before. So eh, it's not quite what he was going for, but it is an improvement. He's um, The real question is what he does with his last bowl, Dave, and I'm not sure what the answer to that is. And we're just waiting for it to come into the picture here. It's looking fairly good. Yeah, good stuff here. He's played oh, this two. is going to work perfectly. Oh, oh. a little bit unlucky. It, I was thinking that he may have enough juice on it to knock the speckled bowl Blue. out of the way. Yeah, it looked good. And he's actually given Gordon two things to think about now because it's almost a shelf. So there'll be a temptation here for Gordon to play with less weight and just try and follow that track down, which may be what he's trying here, as he's got that bowl to land on, as we see the bowl coming to the head. What's he done? I heard noise. Well, he's gotten rid of the bowl that was put there, but he hasn't made a difference there, Dave. So two points to Panapa and Luca, and they extend their lead now. It'll be 14 points to eight. Well, that's the ten ends. particularly handy uh, halfway through, or just over halfway through on the ends there. Now, why would you play ends and not up to 21? Uh, so, in, uh, Well, not, not that there's a, a bad thing on it, but you, know, you could play 21, which is usually quicker. Yeah, that's a good question. So singles, traditionally, well, it's a really good question, actually. So originally in bowls, we only played a set number of ends and mm. points weren't counted. Yeah. So that's why ends uh, in a lot of the old tournaments are an odd number of ends. So um, 11, 15... 21 ends or whatever, so it was just who won the most ends. And that Jack, just would, a little bit, the are they game. saying it's short? No, oh, he only moved it a few yeah. centimetres. It's very short though, isn't it? Yeah, it is a short a short Jack. Uh, and then sort of a bit later on, we started counting the points, which is good. Um, but in New Zealand, we stuck with ends for our singles games for a very long time. It used to be 21 ends of singles, not to 21 points. So what would you rate as the quickest, ends or points? Depends how the game goes, to be honest. Yep. I've seen uh, games that go for 40 ends of singles. Um, 
and I, I think I'd go with go points. For about five. I, I would go with points on that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, traditionally the games are played. We don't we don't play to a point target on in team games in New Zealand. We play a set number of ends. So it's been eighteen ends um, with varying numbers of bowls played uh, for a long time. There was a time in New Zealand when they played four bowls each. And, and is that common say like in Australia? Do they? go with a similar sort of standard? Yeah, set number of ends, but in Australia they play what we call walking pairs, uh, where the leads play two bowls, then you cross over, and the other people play two bowls, then you cross over and the leads play two bowls again, and then you cross over and the skips play two bowls. So too much walking for me, Dave, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> it does uh, sound like a lot so of walking. Every, yeah, every country has its little quirks that's developed over time, and England pairs is often just two bowls each. So it's a very short game. The lead plays two bowls, the skip plays two bowls, and you, but they're still going on. 18 ends, or they're going 21, or some other score. Uh, usually, usually 18 or 21 um, uh, ends, and that used to be what they played for their world championship was two ball pairs. Which, I, for me, it's like watching paint dry. Two ball pairs. I'm not a fan, um, but people seem to like it. Okay. Did that answer your question, Dave? But, well, <laughs> yes and no. But it, but it does seem that in a g generic sense, it would be good to have the competitive standard. You can still play at a club bowls on the weekend or whatever, but have a competitive standard that is, let, let's say, 21, or is to make it whatever number you want, yeah, rather so than ends, because then you create a... I know every sport's trying to create a faster version of itself, but if you streamline that version around the world, then you can have the, the best of New Zealand competing and the best of the UK, of Australia, and that sort of thing. Yeah, it's been worked on in the, for our international events like the World Championships and the Commonwealth Games. Those conditions of play are pretty uniform. Right. And I, I think there's a conversation about turning that into set play, which is another whole conversation. So you'd play um, <laughs> uh, two sets of five ends or whatever, which is a really a fast game of bowls. But our, our nationals, I mean, this has been going for, for over 100 years, this event. Oh, um, this is good. Oh, good try there. Just that's a bowl wide, over a hundred years, and we like to think of it as our blue ribbon sort yes, of, uh, of course. event of the thing. So we find the games usually longer, the eighteen ends of the pairs, first uh, between twenty-one and the singles, uh, so on and so forth. So for someone like, uh, let's say, one of these pairs to go all the way through the competition, mm -hmm. they are effectively at Browns Bay, or in the Auckland region for a week. No. Uh, so it's four, da four days per event. Uh, so oh, there's right. yes, a singles course, and a peers yeah. run. So if you were to win the peers, hypothetically speaking, um, and you'd play six games over the first two days, and it's at least seven games to win the peers over the next two days. So what's that, 13, 13 games, games. Four, four days of bowls. It's, uh, although it's a sport that isn't hard on the body, I can tell you if you played 13 games of high-intensity bowls in four days, you'd be mentally quite tired. Mentally, yeah, exactly. And, and the conditions, whether it's in the wind, uh, blustery conditions today, or perhaps uh, over the next few days, it could be humid and very warm. And you see also that um, our team from uh, from Wellington, uh, from Victoria, you said? Uh, yeah, the lead's from Victoria, and uh, that's Dynan, and the skip, Flash Gordon, or whatever his actual first name is. David. Um, David, thank you, is from Epsom Bowling Club, I believe. And well, you see the two of them perhaps uh, release the ball out of their hands quite early, so you do see a little bit of a bounce. Mm. Uh, maybe getting down that low is not the easiest sometimes, but although we can see Parnipa here, he does tend to get down fairly low on his uh, bowl. Yeah, it's sort of, as long Simply as... does here. As long as whatever you do looks the same every time, like Parnipa's goal, yeah, that's a lovely delivery. Yeah, that's a classical stance, would you say? An old-fashioned one, yeah, right. so we'd call that a fixed stance. So they take a step and swing the arm. We'll see in the next game, Mike Kernahan is probably the best-known exponent of that delivery um, in New Zealand. It sort of dates from a time when our greens were really fast, so it was a way to not overplay the ball uh, because only your arm's moving, so you don't usually accidentally uh, finish. So it's not a first. step in. It's it's almost a static form. You're down low, yeah, and you're, you're almost you static. Whereas some of the newer, more modern style is more of a step in and the whole body going yeah, forward. Yeah, call it a flowing, a flowing delivery. So it's all at all at once. Uh, well, let's see what Kanapa does here. Movement. He's got his cloth, yellow cloth, and they've played really well. I mean, we've only been uh, streaming this game for the last two or three ends, but like I said before, Kanapa and Luca were down early, and when we joined, they were eight all, I think. After, That's right. Well, nine, after, uh, uh, 
with a down or up nine eight or thereabouts nine, anyway, eight, very and close. They really, sort of seem to have put the afterburners on once the <laughs> once the cameras have started rolling, Dave, and we <laughs> see Lucas Bowles the lead, uh, the white Bowles. He's had good weight three times and really setting the scene for his his skip here. Well, he seems to go very well, Luca, on the shorter bowls rather than the longer ones. He just seems to pace it that he's not trying to put too much on it. Yeah, we've seen him. He's got good weight. So if you look at, yeah, like we said, the green's not perfect with all three bowls, but they're all roughly the same distance up the green, um, which is a good sign as a lead. And we see Gordon here looking to use the wing bowl to slow himself down. Has not done so there. Although you That's, still look, uh, uh, the three closest bowls, we're looking at the white ones, all three? Yeah, the white ones will be close. It's going to be more points here to the Panapa and Luca team. And we see Dynan <laughs> just <laughs> not chuffed, taking the bowls out with his pick rapper. A smile there, three there. Lovely smile there from Luca, the lead. And a 17 points to eight lead here now. Beginning, it's looking difficult to see how Gordon and Dynan are going to come back into this game, Dave. Yeah, they've got to have a couple of huge ends. And uh, so far, well, certainly over the last few ends, it hasn't uh, looked like they're going to be able to pull that off. And we can see the wind high on the Uhurukawa tree at the back. And I've got to say that uh, some of those cars do zoom past <laughs> very quickly in the background. And let's see where this jack's going to go. So you were saying around about 19 to 20 clubs all, all over Auckland? Yeah, Auckland and North Harbour. So uh, this year it's been hosted uh, by Browns Bay, which is obviously the North Harbour side over the bridge. So there's more clubs uh, on that side than there would be when it's hosted by Auckland. So there's two centres. There's an Auckland centre, Bowls Auckland and Bowls North Harbour centre that run competitions sort of... In and you're Bowls West North Harbour? No, you're Bowls Auckland, aren't you? Where do you play out of which? Uh, Point Chevalier, so, so Bowls yeah, Auckland. Auckland. Yep, yep. Uh, so that's, yeah, about 20 clubs sort of all around the place. Um, well, which club is the biggest sides? in Auckland? Uh, Howick, in the, in the greater Auckland region, yeah, including North Harbour. Uh, Oriwa and Howick could be the two bigger ones, okay. I think. Um, but there's, uh, there's a few clubs out there who are building. Browns Bay is a great example of a, of a club that's uh, been clever and, and created sort of a social hub for themselves. Uh, the, the, the East Coast Bay's RSA. Uh, has an amalgamated club rooms, I think, uh, or share club rooms with the Browns Bay Bowling Club. So they have a lot of people who come in and, and use the bar and the food facilities as well as play bowls, uh, which is well, good to see. Well, this is um, Basil Dynan at the moment. And where's he going on that one, Alex? Too long. That's a good start. That's the best start we've seen from uh, uh, Basil in a few ends. And remembering they're, they're trailing eight points to 17. It's mainly been these white bowls of Lucas that have been peppering around the jack and scoring points. And just back on to Browns Bay, the where they're situated in Browns Bay, it's right in the commercial centre, and I would have about 50 metres away from the beach, or thereabouts. Anyway, yeah, it's not very that. far away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's really you could uh, you could put your jack on the beach and still actually bowl to it. Yeah, uh, no. it's it's fairly close to the beach and uh, sought after real estate as such. Yeah, it's a beautiful location. Uh, the Browns Bay Bowling Club they've been there for. Do they own about... the land, or is it leased? They do, they do own most of the land, I believe. I think um, uh, back in the day, look at this here from Dino. <laughs> he just took it, he took the jack with him. That's brilliant stuff. That's what they need there. 17 8 down, they just yeah. try to score some points. I think the uh, there's a there's a, the old women's club, uh, which is attached to the Browns Bay Bowling Club. So I think they might lease the land at the back and own the land at the front or something, but certainly sitting on uh, oh, it's, uh, a pretty penny. And I think we're getting a. A bowl coming right across there from the uh, <laughs> other rink to the left. Yeah, it's a bit wider than they would have uh, would have liked it. Oh, yeah. This is coming around nicely. Willing that to stop. That's good stuff. Good bowl. Um, so if you're Panapa and Luca, you're thinking we're 17 points to eight up on the 12th end of 18. If we drop one point, yep. that's fine. You're so just so what they're over. effectively trying to do here is cut down the amount of points that they could lose the end by. Yeah. I mean, yep. sure, they want to win it, but... They can see it's going to be fairly difficult. So if they can cut down and just lose one, that's right. One end by one. Dying in here though, Dave, looking to go square through the white. That is <laughs> brilliant stuff. Where's this form come from? <laughs> no, I, I, it, I would never question it, Dave. Uh, but uh, that's the best team we've seen from Dying, and that's that's great stuff at this time in the game. And now they cross over. Um, sort of the first time we've seen them cross over, holding points 
on the crossover. The white bowl's nowhere to be seen, and it's not because they weren't there. It's because Dynan removed them. That's, that's brilliant. That's uh, superb. As you look at it straight down the green, how are you going to do this if you were a Oh, here's a replay of that last bowl. And, yes, yeah, square through the white. <laughs> brilliant. Um, so if you're Panapa now, and yeah. you're looking straight down the green, and he's, here he is now looking, where's he going to go? Well, we, How is he going to take it around? Is there, does he go on his backhand? Does he go on his forehand, try something different? I would, I would draw it on my backhand like I've just seen my lead do, which I think is what, what uh, Panap is going to do here. And we just spoke about it. He's not, he's not looking to get the shot here. He's looking to minimise the damage. You, know, you, can, you can drop a one and be okay, if you drop a two or three, you're sort of letting them uh, get an opportunity to get back in it a little bit. And let's just have a look as it comes around. Beautiful line. So that's a good first bowl for Panapa. His lead will indicate how short he was, and that's the only correction he needs to make is to add that little bit of weight uh, to cut it down to... to to one or even draw the shot himself and well, Gordon. It's a good start isn't it because he knows that okay it's not a bad first one. A great first yeah. I, but I can improve it even more. Yeah particularly because there's only one thing for him to adjust he doesn't have to start but from scratch. this could be better. Gordon here waiting for that bowl to finish that's a brilliant bowl he's counting. I think they're holding four here Dave and the pressure the pressure is really on we'll see what the lead says. <laughs> Luke is having a good lot. look Two and a half, he reckons. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you managed to get that uh, little bit of sign language there. No, I've been playing bowls long enough, two and a measure, and he's just asking how short he is there. And this is a uh, fisherman talking here. <laughs> it's getting bigger and smaller it's all the time. That's how big the fish was. Um, Luca, what's your uh, what's your thoughts on the sign language there? I think he was indicating that he'd rather his skip miss heavy than short because he's got a back bowl. So if he was to miss heavy and clunk into something, you could get a good result as opposed to falling short where you can't get lucky falling short. And Panapa here on his back end. One didn't come out as good as it could have. Let's just see. We know this hand swings a lot, Dave. He's willing it on. Too much too early. Willing it on. Doesn't have the weight. The line, absolutely perfect. He's dead in line with the jack, but the speed not there. Well, it's obscured the vision, but it isn't really going to help them with points, is it? Yeah, where his first bowl was good, uh, that one he'll be a bit disappointed with, and it makes it a challenge. Well, this is a food. very relaxed, I'm not sure if it's going to work, uh, delivery there from Gordon. Yeah, he's a junior, or just out of the, maybe just out of the junior ranks. So in outdoor bowls, a junior is someone who's been playing bowls for between uh, one and five years, as opposed to an age thing. Well, uh, he's going to love just saying that he's a junior yeah, to Gordon, just about everybody. Flash Gordon is not a he's not a he's not a junior, age wise potentially. <laughs> I don't want to make so, assumptions. So Panapa um, has come down now. Yes. To take a look himself. Yeah, and he just wants to ascertain how many points he's actually down. From this camera angle, it looks like at least two, maybe three to that bowl at six o'clock. Looks like it beats the bowl at 12. Uh, but again, it's just about drawing to cut down here. And you can see to the left of the screen there, oh, that was uh, Basil Dynan, who was just, yeah, who was, who was looking in and uh, trying to figure out how many they could come away with. Yeah. Uh, this is with one more delivery remaining. And you can see just a little bit of a, Spin of the uh, bowl and the and the cloth. Just two fingers from his left hand across the body. Yeah, that's uh, all part of that pre-shot routine. Every bowler has one. Try and do the same thing every time. A little bit of pace on the uh, on the bowl. Yeah, so he's thinking about his back bowl now. He's opting for. Uh, a weighted shot. I'm oh. not sold on that decision making. Just played two draw bowls. I don't. I think the time to attack is a little bit earlier on with your three bowls as a skip. So, uh, Gordon now using the finger measure, which I will never understand. Uh, just looking to see. I'd say you were talking about uh, pre-bowl techniques, and what about for yourself? Was there anything that you a system that you'd go through or process? 
Yeah, I usually um, try to loosen my arm a little bit uh, before I play three so or four times. So you do times. a few fake or dummy sort of like deliveries that, yeah. as such. And um, I can't help it, but I tap my foot. <laughs> I tap my foot. It just happens. My foot taps okay. on the sort of... Uh, that doesn't serve any purpose. It just is something that... And what about the strangest on, uh, one that you've seen at a high level? There's a guy called Ian Taylor from right. Australia. I can't even explain his delivery. He played for he played for Australia, won uh, a number of events. Ridiculous delivery. Uh, if anyone's listening, don't go away from our YouTube coverage, obviously, but once the YouTube coverage is finished, <laughs> Take a look, I would encourage right. you to, to Google. Um, well, let's have a look Ian now Taylor. at uh, David Gordon. Oh, Looks straight. Oh no, it's curving away now. So what he was trying oh. to do there has just come out has come out hideously out of his hand. He was trying to trail the jack back. So let's have a look. Have we got two and a half or three here? What's the indicator? Was that a three? I think it was. I think it was a three. Looked like three fingers. Three fingers going down, pointing down uh, from Luca. Hello, Luca. But let's just wait and see to get that confirmed. Yeah, I would say I would say if I was a betting person, I'd vote for three, but it might not be, Dave. Uh, but a great, I mean, they needed that end, didn't they, Gordon and Dine, and they were 8-17 yep. down. Now the trick is to follow it up with another end where you're scoring points. Well, that was a fairly loose <laughs> delivery of the check. <laughs> he was just getting it up there, really. Yeah, you guys put it wherever you want, that's <laughs> fine, but that was very loose. He might have overthrown it here. And so if you do deliver, oh, we're back again. That was good. Yeah. This is a lot straighter. So the uh, the jack being overthrown. So what does that mean if we do have the jack overthrown? It just it means that your opponents get to then put it down themselves. It means they get to re-deliver the jack, yeah. And this one's a lot straighter. Fairly short, but fairly straight though. I just moved just a few centimeters, and. The score, well, it has uh, switched over. You were correct on the three, I believe. Yes, uh, eight plus three. We're on to 11 now. As this is the 13th end, and we are at the Somerset National Singles and Pairs. It's uh, however many days. How many days is it if we go from start? Uh, from the 2nd to the ninth. There you go. Seven days. Yeah. We'll go for that. At this time of the year, Sounds it is right. very difficult for some people to figure out whether it's Monday, Tuesday, or whatever day it is. I don't even know what day it is, Dave. No. I know it's the first day of the Nationals. It's uh, turn up and uh, be ready. And, uh, just one of those days. Whether shops or restaurants or cafes, you name it, uh, getting a coffee, it can be interesting some places uh, where they're open. But that is a superb start. What do you think of that, Alex, for the start there? And uh, very good there from Luca. Yeah, just behind um, the jack. that's exactly the way they want to... Bounce back in, and they still, yeah, that's a great ball. They still have a six point lead, which is healthy, uh, and it's very important if Gordon and Dynan want to. Um, but it's uh, not a bad reply. Yeah, they need to, yeah, it's not a bad reply. They need to score points. It's a bit like there's a bit of darts going on at the moment. The World Darts Championships uh, being we're played. We're through to the first semi finalists, yes. Yeah, and it's uh, about in bowls, it's almost like in darts, you talk about holding the throw and breaking the throw. Bowls are similar because the person with last bowl or the team with last bowl has the throw, so to speak. They have the advantage. They should be scoring on that end. So it's one thing to score when you've got last bowl. It's another thing to score when the opposition has last bowl, which is what uh, Gordon and Diana need to do here. And another, oh, it was a reasonable bowl there we saw from Luca. He's found his touch again. And you can see there it's uh, the, the bowl is, uh, I, I guess, almost bounced out of the hand. Mm. Uh, I believe that... Basil there, Basil Dynan probably has a little bit of difficulty getting down low enough for some of those deliveries, but it's an effective bowl. Yeah, as long as you let it go from the same height every time, right. you're okay. <laughs> it's, it's when it differs um, every delivery that, that there can be a challenge because if you let it go smooth, you're usually adding sort of maybe a metre even to the... Is there any particular rule? Uh, there's no rule. Uh, depending on how high you let the bowl go from the ground, you might get tapped on the shoulder by a greenkeeper. In, Austra in Australia... <laughs> so tapped on the shoulder, it could be worse than that. Yeah. Thumped. In Australia, you're not allowed to, uh, once you join a club, you're not allowed to play on a grass green in a lot of the clubs until you've been coached by the club coach and they approve your really? delivery. Uh, 
Least, wow, least we don't endemic, have anything like that in New Zealand. No, we're nicer than the Australians in New Zealand. That's uh, well, that could either be very good for the coach because then they get to, I, I guess, get some money out of it uh, potentially. But then uh, that does seem interesting. It's inter- yeah, it's interesting. It's probably a bit old-fashioned. I think it probably dates back uh, to the days when you could afford to disincentivise people from uh, playing your sport. Oh. Uh, but just something that happens as we see Gordon here on his forehand looking to connect with the front blue. Cannon it through the head, and he has done so, and it's stuck with the jack as well. So that's worked out well for, uh, for Gordon. That's essentially what he played for, so he'll be happy enough with that. Hidden his leads bowl up and on. We'll see if they're holding the shot. Mike Coonhan in the background will be seeing him soon. Getting his bowls. He's getting ready. I'm sure ready. he's uh, taken a good read of the green so far and uh, looking at what's occurring with both the wind and the actual speed of the green. Yeah, and we got Parnipa here on his forehand side being clapped, an early clap there from Luca the lead. And the, you never early clap, Dave. <laughs> 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 Uh, never count your money while you're sitting at the table. <laughs> yeah. Seems to be a song. And uh, let's see. Everything has moved significantly. So, as David Gordon, he's getting some communication there from uh, Dinah. And, and we're just. What's he pointing at there? He's saying the jack's out this way. Bit of a smile saying, look, play your backhand, please. Draw as close as you can. Let's wait for this to come in. And too much? Too much backhand. Yeah, if we look where he finished, oh, it's easy to do. You see the head and you think, I want to be effective with my bowl. And you give a little bit too much oomph and your bowl just carries on. So we see one of the umpires in the background. Your name has just escaped me. I was going to tell you who it right, was. We'll come back to that one. But in the meantime, it is uh, Panapa with his little spinning of uh, the bowl in the hand and the Yeah, the same the thing, look at the two fingers. Yeah, there we go. Tucked underneath. Some quirks. Oh, it seems to work and he'll take a step and swing his arm. There we go, on the forehand they lead 17-11, of course, on the 13th end. Now, there is a time limit uh, day for these games, but it's a very generous run. It's three hours is the time limit. So if you That's don't... That's worked out fairly good. Yeah, he'll be happy with that. Again, they've got... They'll look like they've... Well, they feel like because they have. They've got uh, Gordon and Dylan surrounded. So how many uh, points would you give them at the moment from what we see? Well, it's either the white bowl at 12 o'clock is holding, which would be one point to Panapa and Luca. Or the blue bowl at seven o'clock. The speckled would be blue bowl. One point to Gordon and Dynan. Based on the way Parnipper played quite uh, they're looking to score. And for the interest of the game, I'd like to say that Gordon and Dynan are holding one. For the interest, but not necessarily in the <laughs> Maybe not reality. in reality. Uh, okay. but so we may have to get out the measuring game. here on this one, but in the meantime it is Parnipper with the last of this end. Yeah, it can be hard to tell sometimes with the camera angles that we have uh, who is holding the shot. Panapa on the forehand with a bit of weight. He's got opportunities here to score. Willing his bowl to turn. It's, it's not, not going, going to, going so now to. he's hoping for a little bit of luck off that one. Oh, Ooh, not to be. No. And we're going to check on one point. We'll see. It looks like it's a blue to me. And I think we saw Dinan indicate one up. And the jack being handed. Yes, one there. So the mini comeback continues. It does continue. Also, we had a three, and now we've had a one. Yeah, and it didn't look like they were going to score on the crossover, Dave. Remember, uh, right. Luca had a bowl essentially right by the jack, and Gordon played a good shot to cannon the blue bowl through the head. Oh, I can tell you, it's uh, looking fairly overcast at the moment, and there's a couple of threatening clouds in the background. We'll uh, wait and see on that. Uh, the breeze uh, just died down a little bit. Uh, we can see it in the higher trees, uh, a little bit less at ground level. And uh, we'll just let the jack come down. It's going to be straightened up very shortly. So the men's pairs, 205 entries. Mm -hmm. 
The singles are 328, which yeah. is uh, fairly huge as I guess we get back into full entries after COVID years and things like that as well. For the women's pairs, we've got 88. Women's singles, 127. The open disability singles and open disability pairs, that is 30 and 14. Mm -hmm. So fairly good numbers, uh, some of the better numbers. Can you recall anything bigger, uh, significantly bigger in the past few years, Alex? Now, in recent times, uh, we've sort of slightly increased the numbers actually over the last uh, six or so years. The numbers have steadily uh, steadily climbed, incrementally climbed. It's not been massive jumps, but we've right. stayed steady and just been sort of increasing the numbers over the last um, five or six years, which is really satisfying. Of course, uh, like any sport, we could look back to the halcyon days of the of the 80s when we used to get 2,500 entries in the singles. Uh, How would you navigate that. hosting that? We had a lot more clubs. <laughs> but it's still a staggering. It's mind-boggling to think how they managed it uh, even even if you think about in the 40s and 50s, we had say 2,000 entries in the in the bowling singles. I can't grasp how they managed to sort the results through. And how it would take probably two weeks. It took a long time because it used to be of something called the the two life system as well. So there was no such thing as section play. Everyone started off with two lives, and you right. lose two games and you're out. That's essentially how it worked. If you lose one game, you yep. go down to the low, bottom half of the draw. If you lose that game, you're gone. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's still something that we use, but yeah, it's uh, certainly we've changed a bit since then. Uh, but just mind. I guess you've also got potentially them. less time. Like these players here know that they could have two days, in theory, two days and six yep. matches as such, and the pairs. So that that could be two days out of their time or it could be four days of pairs, and then if they play the singles as well, it could go all the way through six days. Mm -hmm. So six days versus potentially two weeks, or whatever it may have been in the past when you had the 2,000 odd entries. Yeah. I'm sure some historians can uh, update us even further <laughs> than some, that. Someone will know. <laughs> yeah. It certainly would have taken a long time, and yeah. perhaps we don't have that sort of time anymore, or people have too many other things to do. Yeah, just yeah. it is what it is, but uh, I think we provide a really cool the nationals we have now is a is a cool event and satisfying people to play. And we see well, that was very straight. It was overplayed, and we see Dynan, although he's not holding the shot, really has stepped up again in the last two or three ends, starting to give us skip more to work with, uh, Gordon more to work with, and they cross over though one down, but with what we call second, third, and fourth shot. So if you can find a way to remove the first shot. Oh, he's just got to be careful that he doesn't get collected. Oh. <laughs> there we go. We saw that coming. Big smiles there. Someone will have shouted at him. <laughs> in the meantime, we have uh, Gordon and Panaba coming down to uh, the end. Let's see what, uh, what they can do. And uh, Well, that is the thing when you do have uh, so many uh, rinks being used. Some can get a little bit closer than the others. Yeah, people usually shout, bowl, and then you... Uh, you <laughs> you jump somewhere you hope and hope you're jumping the right way. <laughs> and in the meantime, it's a little bit of a blockage up in front of the jack there. Three balls. Let's see where this one goes. Is it going to knock one of them out the way? Possibly oh. knock it closer. So the leading bowl there, uh, Alex, is the white of Luca, I believe. That's how it looks to me. So holding one, so it's now back getting another bowl on the head for Parnipa. He's on his forehand here. He'll just be looking to draw a second shot because it, it begins to feel a little bit lonely if you've only got one there in your position. Well, it's easy for second, your opponents third, fourth, to potentially knock one out rather than two or three, isn't and, it? And you only have to be in the area as well. Gordon only has to be in the area to get a good result. So it's sort of uh, uh, you want to be getting another bowl close. How's this one going? A oh, little bit of a blockage in the way. No, it's indicating. Great shot. <laughs> there you go. There's the applause. And that's what exactly what he wanted to do now to try and get rid of both. Although it's possible if um, Gordon plays on his forehand and hits that blue bowl that sits at 10 o'clock. No, he's not going to do it. That was pretty ambitious. You're going to call that possible that you'd knock Hit the, the bowl, two of them out of the way, ricochet into the other. Yeah. Okay, maybe not. Uh, it he's almost looks as though we had two coming out. He's done it out. this oh. way. Oh, he did. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, he almost uh, 
We knocked one, but then that actually made it closer to the other, right? <laughs> yeah, it did. It went, uh, there was a chance of luck, but it wasn't to happen. Gordon on his backhand, so the jack now and hard against that blue. And you can probably hear the wind gusts in the uh, in the actual recording. And it's fairly loud at times, but it is gusty. It just scoots away and then comes back strong again. Yeah, yeah, it's the um. Now I think those bowlers should watch out as well. Nope. Briefly looking at it, Panapa still invested, Luca less so, as we watch this bowl, needs to go one way or the other. That's not bad. Yeah, it's actually Is quite it? good there. It's very good there, he sort of locked it up. So Gordon. We're man. going to have to see something exceptional now to actually, from Gordon, to actually cancel out yeah. what Panapa and Luca have got. So we look at them, they're holding, Panapa and Luca holding at least one, maybe two. Um, to the, the second shot, maybe that white bowl that sits at four o'clock on the screen. And so you, what, what would you do on this one? Or what would you expect them to do? I think legitimately he has to try and kill the end. So you could uh, play on his forehand side, but just to our left, and just try and hit the jack or the bowl to kill the jack on either side. Right. And then you replay the end. So there's no points given away at that point. The end is just replayed. You can't draw closer than... Than what so is he is. looking for a drive, or is he looking to just a traditional bowl but bring it around? It'd be tempting. You'd have to have a. It'd be very tempting to drive at that because it's quite a small target. If you look at um, Flash's bowl that sits at uh, eleven o'clock on your screen, and then uh, Parnipper's bowl that sits at one o'clock, you have to navigate that gap. So it's easier to navigate that gap with speed right. than it is to navigate it just with a with a drawing bowl. Uh, some players don't like to play drive shots, though, and if he doesn't, we may see Flash play a, another... Uh, and tell us again, shot. where exactly is the jack? Because we couldn't yeah, see we could it see on it that right angle. There. there it is. Oh, great. Okay. Oh, camera, brilliant. Camera brilliant work. camera work. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Whoever did that, uh, we can see the jack there. Yeah. Essentially hard against that, uh, that flea bowl. So Flash. difficult for anyone from any angle to really see. It is. It is, and I think... And that's why he came down the green to actually take a look. So he's opting with less weight than what we thought, but the same idea, looking to clear it. One, uh, two. Oh. Ooh. Ah. Oh, no. So what are you going to call? It's a blue, but that was like watching dominoes. <laughs> that was incredible. He nearly got the shot out of that, Dave. <laughs> they're, they're all looking, and it's just a one, folks. <laughs> he's going to chalk it anyway, Dinan. And we'll see if Luca wants to... What's happening no. here? Yeah, we've got the chalk. <laughs> no, your chalk doesn't work. My I saw chalk him does. spray it twice. I think it got blown away in the wind. Oh, that was that was exciting. But it's one there to the blue, at least, and we might see. Um, it looks relatively safe if part of a place where he's putting his foot on his forehand side, just draws a second shot. He's got that white bowl at six o'clock of his leads. He could make a three out of this, Dave. Let's see what he can do now. Uh, we've got the replay. Ding bong. There we go. Yes. <laughs> and then it just drops and it pushes the, the jack away just a little bit. That was an incredible moment there. Do I see a bit of rain or am I imagining things? Ray Martin to the far left. You can see his shoulder, Dave. One of the peers two, right. three years ago at Christchurch. He's another one who I should have mentioned in my picks. In the, sort of <laughs> whoa, the, whoa. the top ten or so. We will uh, check and make sure that uh, whose shoulders you know. <laughs> he beat me in the uh, indoor singles, <laughs> indoor national singles this year. Okay, you know his shoulders well. It's just a part-time indoor bowler. Took me apart in post-section. Oh, that's okay. So we see Panapa here on the forehand side. Luca oh, was asking his to bowler to turn down. Oh. That weight, that's actually, that was dangerous weight to play. He could have cannoned his own ball out there if he had been... So high risk. Now. That was a high risk weight to play. And on your had, last shot when, you, when he didn't need to. Yeah, I think he was, I think he probably overplayed it by mistake. It is raining. It's raining, Dave. You can see and that there. heavy now as well. It's the rain. If they're going to carry on. They were, they're keen to finish this off. Assists down. And Goodness gracious me. <laughs> Panapa looking around going, where'd that come from? I tell you, we did not order the rain. No, Wales, no. New Zealand, we specifically asked, we said, we're having the Nationals in Auckland, no and, rain. Well, 
Uh, we're going to watch. Uh, we're going to watch people take cover here, and that is really. That's really so, good how long things. are these bowlers going to stay out there? Well, it depends because it's. Uh, you can play until the umpire rings a little bell and says you can't play anymore. So usually it comes down to uh, the individual teams. I've seen people play. In well, we can see Tamara in the background through. actually covering the cameras. There she goes. Run. She's Running doing around. a good job. I can't see. It. That's where I'd fall down, literally. Um, we see there. I, I think the thing is it's, it starts to get unpleasant for everybody and it can actually... What's the worst thing is that it comes out of your hand a little bit it's a bit slippery coming out of your hand, or that it's oh, this actually worked very nicely. It's worked out well. Um, or that it's slippery on the actual green, and that you, the speeds change dramatically. Well, at the beginning, so if it's if this rain stops shortly, the speed of the green's not going to change. So, uh, but it will change how easily you can hold on to a bowl. Yeah. So that's your initial issue, and then as you indicated, if it continues to rain, you'd start to see some pooling happen on the greens. Yeah. And that's, that's not going to help anybody, is it? No, nah, that's when your bowl starts slowing down. Uh, the bowls get something called a rooster tail, so the water flicks up behind them. <laughs> um, I think they'll be spray. Yeah, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not good. Uh, but if you're Gordon and Dine, and I think you're probably quite happy that it's raining because they felt, I felt like they feel on the back foot the last few ends. Sometimes that little change is what you need. Now, forgive me here, but has that score changed? Shouldn't it have changed? It should have, uh, but I suspect perhaps yeah. the people are out. Uh, okay, now this is actually coming down. Cameras. It's almost difficult to see. Forget about the bowling. You can hardly see for some. Although it does appear to be quite clear. Well, <laughs> somewhere else, <laughs> because this is looking difficult for us to see. Let alone the bowlers. It's, um, I guess behind the club appears to be brighter. Yeah, I think it'll be a squall. With okay, a so we do have the point has changed now. So one point from that last end. 18, 12, three ends to go. <laughs> One of the lads coming down there, <laughs> he doesn't look that happy. He's not chuffed. He's from Okato, that guy. His name again escapes me. Okato Bowling Club in Taranaki, playing okay. with Adam Collins, who's the guy you can see. Right, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, everybody else has run clubs. inside, but... Uh, Obviously made a sterner staff from the Taranaki Centre. <laughs> and it appears that on our green at the moment, well... Uh, we do have uh, David Gordon, Basil Dynan, and up against uh, Penny Panapa and Pale Luca. However, we're just slowing down a bit for the actual bowlers to get uh, coats on and perhaps even a change of cloth to try and keep it as dry as possible. Yep, that's the thing. And looks like uh, our guys are, sold, are trooping through though, Dave, which is nice to see. Well, the wind has certainly picked up, but uh, you can see it really gusty up the top of those high trees. Yeah. So I wouldn't say it's got too much brighter, but the rain, the heavy rain, appears to have uh, well eased off slightly. I suppose that's a good thing about the wind that we've we've pointed out is that it should mean that it's squalls that pass through and hopefully don't hang around. Well, we'll do a quick mid service look while you look at these uh, next couple of uh, bowls there, Alex. So we see here, Dinan. On the back end, oh, just a bit tight. <laughs> nice to see you. A good wait, and we'll wait now for Luca, looking a little bit more comfortable in his rain jackets. Well, it does say cloudy periods and isolated showers. Uh, Easterly is becoming stronger in exposed places. Uh, it is on the east coast of Browns Bay Club, although one layer. One well, layer. <laughs> depending on whether you want the raincoat on or not. And I don't believe that uh, uh, Basil Dynan is actually uh, agreeing with that one layer. I'd go more than one. I think it's more than one layer for me. Basil here on his back end, though. This isn't far away, Dave. Look at this oh, one. See. If it gets clear past in the rain, torrential rain. It looks like he's drawn the shot there for oh, just out of the count. So not quite drawn the shot for a skip. Uh, David Gordon. Well, that's uh, fairly widely spread. It is, we uh, haven't seen this for several ants. In fact, the last uh, three to four ants have been quite close knit anyway. Yeah. I think, um, oh, and uh, Dynan carrying two picker uppers down with him, which is a fair effort. 
and he uh, <laughs> doesn't look overly pleased with the conditions at the present time. But uh, meanwhile, uh, Panabo really trying to dry off the bowl. On the forehand side. So at this stage, if you were our bowlers yourself, would you be mentally adjusting to things? Would you be thinking, I have to go faster, slower? Is there anything you have to do because of that squally shower we just had? Yeah, they've all played... Um... I'm sure they've all played in the rain a lot, but would you... This is pretty good. Good shot. Would you be adjusting... Oh, I've got to go a little bit harder, a little bit faster, or maybe a little bit slower? How would you, how would you think that out? Yeah, you sort of... I'd say you're more alert to the conditions. Right. So initially you don't Rather change. than adjusting, you're yeah, just you're, aware. You're alert, so you know that there's a good chance that if I start falling short, it's because the green's got heavier, not because I've let it go funny. <laughs> Did you just make up an excuse there, Alex? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> That's the way I work with bowls. Never my fault. Um, so they'll become more alert. You know, they'll be, they'll be expecting the green to slow down eventually. Um same thing with the with the wind you usually just just try and be alert as to as to what is happening uh, but you don't sort of second guess it unless they had been inside for 15 20 minutes while the rain had come down when you come out you know there's a change uh, but one of the whole oh, that oh from one end it looks relatively okay and from the other it looks hideous from this end it does not look that great no. to be honest uh, <laughs> and then like uh, the clubhouse end looks brighter <laughs> It's quite foggy from one end, Dave. It, it is. <laughs> How far How away are we work? <laughs> from one end to another? How far is it? About 35 miles, 33 and a half metres as we uh, So that's 100 there. feet uh, for some people. And Dave Gordon here on the back end, resting the bowl, sitting in. That could be close. That could be close to the shot. No. Nope. Two, says Luca. Well, that's a... Uh, Straight look down the green at the moment to the jack. But Papa suggesting he move across or he's waiting for the call. Just asking, he's asking if he should play or what hand he should play because he's holding a couple already. I suppose the danger if he plays on the back end, which he's going to do, is he doesn't want to knock one of the opposition's bowls yep. in for shot. So we just have to be careful here. That very deliberate action there, Parapa. On the backhand, very smooth delivery there. Now we watch this one come into the head. If he's got the weight, nah, it's going to fall short. That may have been uh, to do with the rain on the on the hand, or as you said, it could be slowing down. It's a uncharacteristically big miss. You know, he wasn't. Uh, I wouldn't say he was in the area there, Dave. That fell quite short. Gordon. Now, forehand or backhand? It appears in this game anyway. We've had more backhands than forehands. Yeah. Is that the case in most most games? Uh, ordinarily, uh, you'll find a side of the rink that you prefer. Oh, Gordon this is straight. Here. Square played that with a lot of weight, but I'm, oh, that's gone. That couldn't have gone worse. So what we're looking at, just up at um, almost 1 and 2 o'clock, or not quite that, both uh, 12.30 and 1 o'clock, is the bowls there, that is of... Oh, there you go. <laughs> yep. yeah. Three. Three is the yeah. score. So they were holding... Panapa and Luca were holding two. Uh, Gordon was narrow on a run shot and punched the shortest bowl of Panapa and Luca's up yep. uh, for three. So a bit unlucky there uh, and a bad result. Uh, but you're talking about backhand and forehand. Because the backhand is predominantly across your body. Yeah. Uh, going across from on a right-hander from right to left across your body. And the forehand is more of a, a straighter out of the hand, out of the palm. Yes, that's right. So uh, most bowlers uh, generally prefer their backhand side. It's generally... <laughs> we do have a bit of mist on one end. <laughs> a bit of moisture on the, uh, uh, on the lens. Uh, the backhand side is generally easier to play because it's across, not away. Um... So that sometimes comes into into consideration for some for some bowlers. Uh, ordinarily, though, you'd expect the bowlers to play on the rink and decide which side of the rink they prefer. Uh, it's usually sort of go back and forth on one side. 
Uh, if you don't do that, it's called going around the clock, which is also something that happens. So you might have a lead that prefers their backhand. So you'd say they go around the clock on the backhand. So just sort of and stick for you, to, stick for to you side. yourself, uh, what do you prefer? I usually try and find the nicest side of the rink and play it going back and back and forward. And when so you say the nicest side, what do you mean by that? Uh, the side that I think is more forgiving. Uh, so <laughs> this is sounding like another one of those excuses. It's the one you can miss by <laughs> miss by more and and not get punished for it. Right. Uh, so it might be the ditch side that you see them going back. So I play forehand one way back and the other or vice versa. Now, what we're going to do as well is uh, we will try and get through to our uh, people on the ground a little bit closer by the cameras and uh, just see if they can maybe do a little wipe down of uh, a couple of the lenses. Yeah. Um, and looking pretty good from this angle, but uh, straight on, uh, <laughs> it's either raining hard or... Yeah. I'm not uh, too sure now. Most of the squally shower has uh, departed. It's been and gone. But we may just get a little bit of a wipe down of the lens. Left Tamara okay. with some things to deal with. I'm sure she'll go yeah, around yeah, to, exactly. to that. As we see, Dine in here on the back end. They now, it's a, it's a hard road to travel, isn't it? 21-12 down on the 16th end. So you should can, you go all out or should you just try for a gradual eke one point back and another? Oh, the uh, what's the equation? Uh, 21 12. It's going to have to be some. You can't really get nine points uh, and three ends. You're going to have to get three each. Yeah. yeah. So the required run rate is three and end. Yeah. Um, and you try and get it down to as the fewest number of points you need to score on yeah. the last end. So, so there's going to have, have to be something fairly dramatic there is. Yeah, pretty much. They'll, look, they'll be looking for a four this end, really. Uh, and I can't remember get, in the last few ends that they've actually scored a four. They haven't. It's they not, haven't it's been, since we've been watching. Yeah, it's not. Well, we've had one end where they had a chance to score a number, but other than that, it's only been ones and twos, really. It's one of the layers that's removed there from Luca. One layer, did you reckon? Uh, uh, the, the one layer, according <laughs> to the, the Met Service. Uh, so it's, it's a hard road to travel. Really, you're just trying to... They'll try and get within six points on the last end so that they get to play the last end and then see what happens from there. Oh, Gusty better win that one. And a good ball there from Dinan, holding one on the crossover. And tell me, if uh, if teams are equal in section play, like they've had four, four and four, or however many wins, four that you need, or five or six, five and six, effectively you win all six, you're through. Yep. Uh, five, I would assume the same thing. Yep. Fours, if you've had, if you have several teams on four, what happens then? Uh, you're through. You're through. So regardless. you're still through anyway. Yeah, so that's where it may be bigger than sixty-four draw. But not significantly, I wouldn't yeah, expect. Yeah, so that's the reason is that we don't, um, Bowls New Zealand doesn't say we need to get 32 qualifiers or 64 qualifiers right. or 128 qualifiers. It's, uh, we take the post-section draw as it comes. So we say if you win four games or more, you qualify, and then whatever you get is whatever you get. And it means that there's always some, well, there's usually some buys in the first round and there's a perfect number of qualifiers uh, to get you down to the, one of those brackets. And which person from Bowls New Zealand has that task of... Uh, finding the winners and uh, then putting them all together? Uh, at the moment, or for this Nationals, it's uh, Chris Lander and Colin Williams are, are yep, doing so that. So Crash has to do that, okay. They get to have that uh, very stressful. <laughs> it's, well, it's stressful because you do the post-section draw and you uh, publish for people to look at. There's only a certain amount of time between qualifiers. So you publish the qualifiers before the post-section. People know who's qualified before the post-section draw is done. There's only a certain amount of time that you can wait before you do the post-section draw. And it always used to stress me out in case someone had filled in a scorecard wrong at the club. So I might have won a game 21-20, but the umpire or whatever, it's written down the other way, the wrong way round. Always, you know, I was always paranoid that there had been a, a result entered wrong and that we would have to redo the entire, the entire situation. Never happens, uh, but it used to be quite stressful. And so, effectively, <laughs> I'm working this out, Alex. So, effectively, you have to rely on a card that is written in 2120 or whatever it may be, handed into the the scorers table at that particular club, and then yeah, so that's input the, it. Yeah, the workflow has been improved recently. It used to be uh, like a, a phone-in system and that was quite <laughs> complicated. So we'll, we'll just take a look at this uh, delivery here. Gordon here on his backhand needs this one to stop. Needs it to stop. Not quite too far. Oh, well. Okay, where are we going? It's pause ready to clap. So, where are we looking at there, Alex? A measure, says uh, Luca. I would say that the bowl at 6 o'clock is holding the shot. And which bowl is that? Who's that with? That's the uh, one of Gordon and Dinan's uh, holding one, I think. But in the meantime, Luca's just 
saying to Panaba, just clean your room. And we'll see what Panaba can do on this particular bowl. Well, he's got the jack exposed. Yeah, there's, 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 uh, there's space here. And they're 12, 21 12 up. They won't be too worried about um, trying to do anything silly. How do you select your pair? Is it like, please play with me? Uh, pretty much. Uh, there are some some teams uh, have played together for a number of years, and it might be you might have started bowls together in the same club and have since moved to different regions, so they're old friends. But other times you might come across someone at even in other nationals and say, look, would you like to play a game of peers? Oh, oh he's no, kicked oh, the bowl. Oh. <laughs> like it was behind him. <laughs> in the meantime... Uh, Meanwhile, we're I think distracted uh, there. What happens? Uh, Penny played quite a good shot. I think he's drawn the shot. And Dynan just so saying. So what's Gordon yeah. got to do? He again has it all exposed for him. Yeah, I mean you just have to try and draw the shot here. Although actually, if you're looking for numbers, it would be tempting to push it to the back where there's the three blue bowls. He's not done that. And I think uh, we may see a, a shake of the hands here, or well, very close to it. So a lot of pointing. Where are we going? Which bowl is going to be the closest here, uh, Alex? Oh, that's the question. He's measuring... Who's that one? That's Gordon's bowl. First, and then we're going to see him go to Penny's one at 11 o'clock. Hasn't made it, so one there. So the Gordon, back one again. Dynan, 13. They're just hanging around. One more point comes into it. Uh, like we did say that they needed three, three, and three if you're dividing it up that way. Yeah, so now the, the equations. Two, two ends remaining, and they're going to need, well, eight from 13 to eight to make it 21 all. Yeah, so four, four and four to get a draw. Yeah, it's looking unlikely. It's never impossible if it's mathematically, you know, strange things can happen in bowls and pressure's a funny what beast. Are, what's some of the best that you've seen in perhaps the last couple of rounds of... Uh, of of a clash, uh, what are you seeing out of a game? Uh, I've seen a few, uh, more than once a team pick up a five or a six on the last end to win. Really? And that is just is simply the pressure. You know, if one team's five up going in, if you put yourselves in the shoes of the team that eventually loses, you're five up last and you think, I've essentially won this game. The opposition might play three good bowls, so you cross over your three down, you go, they only need to add two more, and then the pressure sort of gets on, and you see them overplay bowls or underplay bowls. So I've seen a few fives and sixes happen. Now, Dave, usually in post section when the pressure's really on, and you need to you need to win the game to stay in the event. Well, let's now have a look at uh, Basil Dynan and first ball. He's not happy with that bowl. That one. No, no, that, well, it's... that was a rain affected bowl. That slipped yeah. out of his hand. Out of the yeah. hand and uh, way out, and uh, that's in the. Well, not quite the other rink, um, but it is a long way away here. Yeah, not happy with that. In the meantime, it is Pale Luca from Papatoe Hunters Corner Club. And that's a lot wider than what he thought as well. On the back end. It's too far. Let's see, let's see if uh, Basil can improve on his previous delivery there. Uh, this one looks a lot better there, Alex. It does. It came out better. Still fairly wide. Same. Slow down. Slow down was uh, David Gordon. And it didn't. Here we go. On the back end. So we've not got many ends to go in this game, uh, regardless of what happens, Dave. And up next, we will be following uh, Mike Kernahan and Roger Stevens playing Peter Peter and Adam Bluch, a father and son team oh, really? uh, from Teatro 2, Peter and Adam. Okay. Uh, and Kernahan and Stevens, whereabouts are they both playing out of at the moment? Somewhere in Dunedin. Right, one of the Dunedin <laughs> clubs? Okay. It's, it's, well, that's it's, been the tradition for Kernahan, always been a Dunedin that's all I can give you. <laughs> sporting identity in uh, various sports as well, and uh, whether it's administration or an actual bowls play. So, Teatro 2 against of Dunedin Club, we will look that up for you. I'm sure Alex is furiously looking that up right now. Essentially, yeah. It might be a maybe a, a vaguely a composite team, I think. Right. Well, we'll find out about those two players in just a moment. And in the meantime, this one's coming around from Luke uh, 
just about kisses the jack. Northeast Valley. There we go. That's what we wanted. Oh, both of them? Both of them, yep. Okay. And you're going to tell me where Northeast Valley is as well, aren't you? Dunedin. <laughs> We've apologised to all people from Otago uh, with the knowledge from <laughs> Alex Reed there of uh, Otago Bowling Clubs. Not at its best. Uh, anyone who knows me knows that I don't have what could be considered a sense of direction. It's um, Or sense of colour. Yes, well, um, that's true too. <laughs> we're not even saying about the common sense right now, but in the meantime, well, let's look at the 17th of the 18 ants, and that one just... Well, uh, David Gordon is uh, not happy, turns around, walks off. But in the meantime, it is Penny Panapa. Well, try, look, you can see Gordon in the background <laughs> leaning on his mate saying, that was a shocker. He's a, quite a character, Gordon. Well, he just has that look, doesn't he? Let's see what Panabek can do with this. Uh, we're certainly quite widely spread on this one. Yeah, and we see those three good bowls again from Luca. For me, he's been uh, sort of... I'd say the most steady player that we've seen. Well, this is uh, this is holding up. That's a great shot there too from Panapa. They've got no intention of losing this game. This yeah. one's quite straight. Yeah, I think I think we'll see this being their last end, uh, to be honest. So what we'll do, uh, Dave, when this game is, is complete, is take a short break. So if you're watching this coverage, that's a perfect opportunity to go, what is it, is it lunchtime? Have a late lunch at uh, 1 o'clock. <laughs> With your healthy snacks I'll that you've a, got here. I'll have a lunch too. You know, I've put, oh, I'm not even going to talk about it, it doesn't matter. No. Uh, <laughs> no one needs to know. Um, a good time for lunch or a cup of tea or a drink of water, perhaps, Dave, uh, while we wait for the, for the next and final game to start. As we see Panapa here with his penultimate bowl, or what's like to be his penultimate bowl of this game. They may decide to play the bowls back only because that's where uh, the bags are, but it would be a meaningless a meaningless end. As I can't see them getting within six points here. But sometimes you say, look, we'll just play the bowls back because that's where that's where everyone is. But do we come down to, so we don't come down to actual... No count back, it's just yeah. wins, so, wins and losses. No, just thinking if there was a whole lot of teams together, but because we're going yeah. through, it doesn't actually count at all. That's right, yeah. And we've got Basil there just uh, pointing with his pick-up stick. What's the technical term for it? I've always called it a bowls picker uh, and I suspect... That's the least technical <laughs> term I've ever heard, but that's okay. In the meantime, this is straight and straight. I suspect that's not the, uh, not the technical. I think there's a few companies that sell them, so I'd have to... Bowls Lifter, that's what they're called. Ah, Bowls there we go. Bowls I'm Lifter. Yeah. Okay, that's as technical as we're going to get it. As Panapa has one more delivery, takes a step out to the side, points to his left. So if he's going to go left, then he's going to use the backhand, correct? And uh, Alex just looking up uh, some vital information. Probably about the nutritional value of the food that he's got. I would say so. Um, but who knows? As we see... Oh, is he just... This is just for fun, really. This bolt. Well, he was pointing left initially, and then... Uh, yeah, I think he was trying to play square through uh, Gordon's bolt. So what have we got? There we go, the handshake. Yeah, there's a handshake there. And that means 21-13 after the 17th end. And... So the win for the uh, Hunters Corner Papatoe Bowlers, that is uh, Pino Panapa and Pale Luca. And uh, they have uh, beaten David Gordon and Basil Dynan. A little bit of chat there. Basil's just uh, chatting away with Pale Luca. And checks all round. And that's a good start there for the team from uh, South Auckland, from uh, Papatoe and Hunters Corner, winning 21-13. Alex, you've, uh, was that what you expected, or was there no expectations on these early contests? Uh, it's hard. Yeah, there's no real expectations. Um, I've seen more of Panapa and Luca than I had of, of Gordon and Dinah, and I knew they were a good, a good team, so probably on form have, have done what they were expected to do, but one of the things about section players, as we spoke, it's, a, it's, it's just a random mix, so it is, un, it is an unpredictable um, situation. 
And just rolling the uh, bowls down. So, Alex, the next game, as you mentioned, Mike Kernahan and Roger Stevens from North East Valley in Dunedin up against Paul, uh, Peter Bolcher, uh, Blucher, sorry, and Adam Blucher from the Teatro 2 Club, the father and son pair. That's the one. And uh, that will be on at around about... Uh, what time are we looking at for that one there, uh, Alex? Well, we said 2.30, uh, but we are well ahead of schedule. Uh, so it'll be uh, when the players are fed and watered, uh, they right. will... They'll make an agreement to come out themselves. So I would say uh, stay tuned, and within the next half an hour, I'd imagine we'll get going. And Mike Kernahan already has his bowls out there already, uh, so uh, no doubt he's keen uh, to get on with things. Uh, conditions look as though they're still blustery. Uh, maybe the odd shower to come through. We'll let you know very shortly, in fact, back at 1.30.
And welcome back to this, the second game of the coverage on YouTube, the Bowls New Zealand YouTube channel. It is the Somerset Nationals singles and pairs. Uh, we have the pairs at the present time and on your screen you will see in the green, well it is uh, Mike Kernahan and Roger Stevens from the Northeast Valley Club in Dunedin. And the blue t-shirts with white shorts, it is uh, the father and son combination from Tiara 2 Bowls Club, Peter Blucher and also Adam Blucher. And we have had some, uh, oh, I guess we'll call it squalls come through, but not for the last little while and let's hope they do stay away. The wind has been uh, gusty at times at the Browns Bay uh, Club right by the uh, beach, Browns Bay, and uh, that jack just going a little bit too far. Alex uh, Reid, what are we expecting from this particular contest? You have mentioned earlier that uh, Kernahan and Stevens, well, I guess they've got to be the favourites, but in post-section play, you never really can tell. Yeah, uh, Kernahan and Stevens are, uh, are the favourites for this game. They're sort of one of the favourites for the for the event, really, um, Dave. They'd be in the top ten uh, teams here. Um, Blucher and Blucher. Peter's been around for a long time. Uh, Mackenzie, who is the daughter of... Peter is a well, very well-performed bowler. Um, Adam is one of the young up-and-comers, one of the juniors. And, and they've, they've gone out to a 5-0 lead as well, if we look at that scoreboard. So they're on their home turf. They'll be up for this fight, uh, but certainly uh, the, the money would be on Coonahan and Stevens in this game. And we'll see what happens. It could be an interesting one. Well, a fast start, but against uh, the experience of Coonahan in particular, you, you have to be consistent, wouldn't you say? Yeah, they will have to be consistent. It'll be interesting to see. We've got 18 ends here. Um, five nil is nothing, really, uh, to, to start off with. Although, of course, you'd rather be the one scoring the points than not scoring the points. You're never going to say no to a 5 nil lead. Uh, but even the start here, we'll just see uh, Roger Stevens. An unusual delivery. And what's unusual about it? Uh, if you watched uh, his right hand... It wasn't sort of in line with his shoulder. He held it out to his side to start off with, which is not something that you typically see. So it's quite wide from the body and comes across his body from mm. a wide angle. Yeah. And so far we've really seen, uh, oh, the jack's looking very lonely. It is, yeah. It looks like it's a, a longer end. We saw, I think, uh, Mike Coonahan uh, stepping out. So the jack's on the two-metre mark there. Possibly the longest end they've played. And that usually means you have to take more green and obviously throw it further, neither of neither of which uh, Peter's managed to do on that occasion. You see him just waving his arm and see the Roger Stevens holds his arm out to his right. Uh, it's quite, it's an unusual sort of, it's an unusual delivery. So most coaches would encourage bowlers to keep the your bowling hand tighter into your body? Yeah, less splayed out, I would say. It's more, your more classic delivery. Uh, but Roger... This is better though. Yeah, he's a, he's a great bowler and his wife... Uh, Roman Stevens has been knocking on the door of the New Zealand team for some time. Uh, played development in the development team for New Zealand. I think she was a powerlifter in a previous life. I think I feel like that's something that she did, um, but I might be wrong. So well, we're doing we'll, a real change here we'll in the sense one. of age and experience. I expect when you see that Mike Conahan coming down uh, with uh, Adam Blucher. Oh, it's one of the brilliant things about the sport is that uh, Mike Coonahan was playing in Commonwealth Games uh, probably before Adam was yeah, born. Exactly, <laughs> probably, yeah. And uh, Coonahan, oh, that's a great start, Adam though. On the it's backhand. Fairly good, too much. Sure. That's a great first bowl. Yeah. I See, think even though it's not completely near the jack as such, it still went the way that he probably wanted it to go. Yeah, it's the right weight, and it's enough in the area that it's one, again, it's making that one correction instead of two. So he had the right weight, so he just needs to change his green as opposed to two things. And Mike Coonahan with the step and the swing of the arm. Well grooved delivery. Been around for a long time. Has Mike Coonahan on his back end here. Willing this ball on. That's good stuff there. Lovely ball. <laughs> Yeah, superb. And Peter just saying, stay on your backhand, son. So with the conditions, we had extremely windy, then almost a hailstorm, and now we've got a little bit of sun back again. Is that not Auckland weather? <laughs> it, it, it's very typical of Auckland. <laughs> Look at this here from Adam Blucher. Beautiful bowl. Gee. 
he's in fine form at this beginning of this game. It's two great shots there from Adam. I am going to ask you very shortly how old he is and uh, what we can actually look at. And uh, I'm sure you will have that on your fingertips really very shortly as well there, Alex. Yep. Uh, he's still at school. Still at school, which right. I know so, because I've spoken to him about exams. Okay. So between so fifth and seventh form, I would he's say. From Tiara Two Bowling Club, Rutherford High School would be the local high school. If he does go there, if not, uh, depends. Oh, 2020 lever. Is it 2022 lever? So is that the is that what he's wearing? <laughs> it's the 2022 blucher. That looks like a lever's jersey to me, which would indicate that he's about 18. Okay, <laughs> we're doing some investigation there, Alex. Good eyesight, good spotting, perhaps. I think we've nailed that. Mike Whoa. Cunahan here, looking to remove the bowl of blucher, has done so. Shit. Great stuff there. Now that's got to be annoying for Blue Chief. Put something right up close to the jack. There you go. 2022. <laughs> Blue Chief. Brilliant. I think um, Michael have done that. You know, he's looking to assert his ability. Yeah. You well, it's authority say, almost. Yeah. You, and, it, and look, it's worked for Adam because he's played two good bowls and that third one, not so good. Mike was saying, doesn't matter where you put them, I'm going to have a go. Yeah. I think we'll see him play an aggressive game here. And the first point's looking like they're going to go on the board. Uh, for Mike Coonhan and Roger Stevens, trailing 5-0 at this early stage. Yeah, I just love that whole stamping my authority on uh, what I can do. And no matter what you do, Adam, I can quite possibly do it better or cancel it out. Yeah, that's, that's what they'll be thinking. You know, you'd, you'd almost call it mean. But I think uh, knowing Mike Coonhan, he would say it's not mean. It's actually playing good bowls and yeah. professional bowls. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we're just going to get the one from that, Alex, or is it a two? I would say one, uh, but that doesn't mean that I'm right. I'll just have a look. Okay, so we get ready for the fourth end of this, the Somerset National Singles and Pairs and uh, Browns Bay Bowling Club, the head centre. Otherwise, we're around about uh, another 19 clubs around the Auckland region because for the men's pairs, there are 205 entries. And this is the post-section play. Of course, there is the singles, 328 entries, women's pairs, women's singles, the open disability singles, and the open disability pairs. Just so have, Six days. Just having a look through the different sections as well, uh, Dave, and these You've results... Some scores, Yeah, you? I do, and these results can be found if you're listening. The full results are available on the Bowls New Zealand website through Bowls Hub Aotearoa. As we see, Roger Stevens there play a good first one. Uh, you want to click on ladder, and then you can see... Uh, well, they'll understand what I'm saying when I say click on ladder. There's a big button that says click ladder when you okay. go to the Bowls Hub Aotearoa Look for the big thing. button, everybody. And you can see, uh, you can see the results there. So, so any so significant ones or a few interesting ones that stand out to you? Yeah, just having a look. So in Section 1, Taylor Horn and Jesse Russell, who are sort of pre-tournament favourite-ish, have got two out of two, which was expected. Uh, um, Shane Rebel and Logan Clark, two out of two. Jeremy Brosman and Aidan Zittestein dropped a game, so they're one out of two in that section one. Section two, which is this section we're looking at here, there's only one round uh, completed that we have uh, see, but we saw Rory Soden and Scott Evans, who I put again in sort of the top ten-ish. They were playing on the rink adjacent to us in the first round, uh, won their game. Ray Martin and Will Bennett, won their games. It's another one that sort of keep an eye out for. And are we looking at uh, pairs from up north to down south, the whole you know, width and breadth of New Zealand? Yeah, I mean, a good example is Ray Martin and Will Bennett. Uh, Ray plays out of Wellington, Will plays out of Hamilton. So there's right. a lot of composite teams in, in this event. Uh, section three, sort of uh, business as usual, really. There's no surprises there. And I'll uh, I'll have, I'll keep having a nosy because we've got 18 ends. I'll have a nosy through and let you know what else yeah. I see, Dave. Sounds great. Well, we're on the fifth end and 5-2. So it was a two from that last end that uh, Conahan and Stevens picked up. And I'm sure they'll be loving it that it's uh, now T-shirt weather. <laughs> well, for all uh, bar one of them, that's Adam Blucher there. Who would have believed that this was would be the weather <laughs> from an hour ago? <laughs> there you go. A high five to Dad. And uh, Blucher walks up there looking back. He's uh, thinking, all right, this uh, man knocked me out of the way last time, Mike Kernahan. Mm. Rod so, Roger Stevens there we see again has played three very good bowls. They're perfect. All three of the perfect weight. And Peter will be aware that he needs to not necessarily hold shot on the crossover, but just give Adam position for Adam, Adam to be able to play. Um, at the moment, that's, uh, that's not 
exactly what he's done <laughs> done on this end. And we see Mike here look to add another bowl, just passing through. So there's some room for Adam on his forehand. So is Adam Blucher here going to play, should he play a little bit shorter or should he try and get in behind? I think he'll look to just dead draw the shot here on his forehand because the back bowl that you can see just at six o'clock on your screen is quite a way back and there's not there's enough gaps that it just it would be a really challenging bowl to to play to utilize that so he'll be looking to draw uh to we'd say it draw to save so he's not even looking to draw the shot he's looking to draw second or third shot so they don't drop a bundle and we saw adam's bowl finish with good weight so he just needs to correct the screen and mike will be looking to add a bit of pressure here with this bowl he's, he'll be disappointed with that although it's come up in the sense that it's come up short, but it's blocking the view a little bit. Yep. Which, well, there was no mucking around there from Adam Blucher because he just stepped up and let loose. Oh, that's a bad ball. And that's probably that. the issue, isn't it? That he just didn't seem to take his time. Yeah, if we look at how much that ball's missed by. Well, I'm not sure if we're going to get a replay of that. I'm not sure Blucher would want to see a replay of that one at all. <laughs> yeah, I'd, uh, no, that's, no, uh, we, no, let's not see that one again. <laughs> that's not what he was looking to do. But he's got a third ball, Dave, which is good news. So he just take his time with us, as we see. Well, you, you have someone like Kernahan who always seems to be so very smooth. Whereas Blucher on that last one was, it, it seemed rushed. That's why we talk about having a pre-shot routine. It makes you take your time if you have some things that you want to do. And he switched to the back end here, which is interesting. He played two bowls on his forehand side and decided to switch to the to the back end for reasons. And that's uh, it's not going to make it. So pretty widespread then, I guess you could yeah, call it for uh, Blucher. Some there from Adam. And three at least conceded there. Maybe more. Four. Ooh. Four there to the team of Kernahan and Stevens. And a pattern's beginning to emerge, Dave, because the first game that we broadcast, before we came on to commentate it, um, uh, Penny, uh, as team, were like 8-1 down, or they were 8-1 down, they were 8 all when we came on to commentate and then scored for a few ends in a row. We come on to commentate this game at 5-0 and the two ends that we've commentated, we've seen Kernahan and Steven score a 2 and a 4. Yeah, I mean, that 4 is just huge. Yeah. And I mean, now, now it takes them to the lead just in, in two ends. And early on in the game, too, in 6, yeah. it's something that you... The so Bluchers again, will be aware that now is a really good time to be scoring a point. <laughs> like you just don't want it to be two or three ends in a row when you're playing a team of, of the calibre of, of Stevens and Kernahan. Well, that's Peter Blucher there and uh, starting very wide on that particular bowl. Roger Stevens on his, on his back oh, end. Roger yeah. Stevens, sorry, my mistake on that one. That's okay, we'll see what yeah. Peter does. See if yeah, yeah, Peter's just coming a, up now. <laughs> It might just be a funny delay that thing. Was, <laughs> in my mind, perhaps. You could uh, be right. <laughs> He let that one go quite smooth. Well, it's interesting, though. They've both gone out very wide. So you were right, uh, because that is what he's done. I would say that's because the last time we saw them coming this way, when the jack was on the two-meter mark, there were a lot of short, narrow balls. Yeah, yeah. So they just... They were swinging around a lot. So now they've gone to the almost further extent. Now we've got uh, Stevens. Well, his first shot was great. Yeah, his first ball was good. And I think this is probably a strategy that Stevens and Kernahan have throwing the jack to the fullest length. So the bowl is travelling 30-something metres. It's as far away as possible. Um, and they'll know that they can play that well. And that's two good lead balls there from Roger Stevens. Peter Blucher needs to... He's switching to his forehand. What's he going to do here? So you think he's going to go forehand? Yeah. He has. Obviously doesn't like that backhand side. Switching to his forehand here. That's a better effort than the other one. That's going to come around, it is. Yeah, that's good balls there from Peter Blucher. And a lot of players would have stayed, would have persisted on the backhand side and looked to make a correction. Now, which way are we going there? Are we saying that Blucher's one is closer or are we staying Stevens? We're having a little bit of a look there from Kernahan. And it looks like Blucher's the closer one. Kernahan uh, doesn't seem to be too fast. Neither does Stevens either, so let's see what he can do with his last ball. He's switching to his forehand. I think uh, the bowl that sits at 2 o'clock would probably be the shot on instinct. And Stevens looking to make that a moot point. 
looking to pick up the jack. No, just a bit too strong. Yeah, he's uh, he would have been looking to promote his own bowl. So here we go. So a foot, a size twelve foot. I'm estimating. One down. He reckons he's one down, Adam. Really? That's what he indicated with his uh, the sign language that I'm apparently proficient at reading, Dave. And we'll see Peter look to play the same bowl again. He doesn't like that no, one. He doesn't well, like that one. Didn't like his uh, back foot. <laughs> Something happened there. And it's almost on the other rink. There are some funny. Uh, there are some funny deliveries. So it reminds me a bit. We spoke on the previous game about the darts that's currently going on, and there's a darts player. Ah, oh, bowls and darts have oh, some it's, it's definitely going on. I there's can a, tell you that one. Read it on the news this morning. There's a darts player called Richie Burnett who won the World Darts Championship in the 90s and has just come back to the sort of, I think he played first round of World Champs this year. And he doesn't have darditis, but he's known for some very unusual uh, spasms <laughs> after he let go of the dart. And you reminded me when you said about Peter's foot. I was watching Richie Burnett play the darts and he'd let go of a dart and his foot would just about come up behind his shoulder sort of thing. It was quite dramatic stuff. And you do see it a bit in bowls as well, just some unusual movements after the release of the bowl. Well, nothing too unusual that we saw on this particular delivery from Mike Kernahan. Uh, he's going on the forehand as well. He is. This is a lovely, he's given that a lovely green, letting that bowl drift back in. It's a beautiful late turn, isn't it? Not quite far enough, but it was a lovely turn. It, it was is. very late. Yeah, we'll see that from Mike a lot, the, the bowl not coming across the centre line. He'll green his bowls very nicely to finish just sort of on the centre line and not narrowing across it. Well, curious about whether the backhand's going to work because we saw a switch from the backhand to the forehand. Mm. Oh. It was not bad, though. Yeah, he was looking to rest on something there and didn't do so. So it was a bowl that was close but oh so far away. Well, so it seems to me that uh, Adam Bluch is the only one sticking with the backhand at the moment. Everybody else has switched to that forehand. Here comes Kernahan coming for a little bit of a... A jog down. Got to be careful from that other rink. He'll get clobbered. Yeah. Slightly overplayed. Cunningham was looking to move the ball up then. I see Adam here on the backhand side. He looked to make a correction off his first bowl. That's a reasonable line, Dave. It's down to the weight now. That line's looking a lot better. What do you think, Alex? It's close. It's down to the weight. That's a great shot no, there. Just, oh, that's just right. That's a good bowl, and we I think we've seen Adam and play a couple the of... low five with Dad as well. Yeah. Good signs. That's a great shot. We, I think we'll see Mike Cunahan switch to the backhand himself. He's got that bowl and jack target there that you can see. Lovely, lovely camera angle. Looking to rest the bowl or move the jack. Either or either's fine. Let's have a look. What are you going to do here? Here we go. On the back end. Feet close together. Again, just plenty of time. No rush in there. That's the thing. And this is beautiful weight. He could get a bit lucky here. He could punch his own bowl up as well. That's what he's done. And the jacks moved back. The jacks moved back. So he punched his own bowl through. He was tight. I'd be reticent to call it lucky, well, uh, but it certainly was a good result. It's still open, though. Yeah, he's been I mean, able... It's, it's a significant enough gap, but it's just about the weight. Mm, that's the thing. So I think um, Adam will see a bowl on a jack target. He'll be looking to put the well, jack in the ditch. It's a real shame for Adam as well, because he'd done so well actually getting his previous bowl right there. Oh, it was a lovely shot. Doesn't muck around on that. No, uh, it's a very natural bowl up, Adam. Looking for this to come into shot now. If he clears the front, he's close. Didn't clear the no, front. No good. And is that two? Yeah, that's uh, that's unfortunate. So that's a two. That'll be two to Kernahan and Stevens there. So Kern they've done a two four two in the last three ends now. Yeah, and that's uh, they'll be pleased with that's, that. <laughs> that's huge. And we'll see this long end again. See the mat's been put uh, at the furthest. Uh, Point back that it can go. It's before, just before the chalk marks, and he'll be looking to throw it to the two meter length. So obviously they've planned to go two meter to two meter. Yeah, deep every time it seems. So does that put a, 
But you'd think if you go short sometimes, it puts just as much pressure because uh, you've got to take that speed and weight off the bowl. It's probably more that you have to be uh, slightly more accurate on the longer ends. Right. So you get more punish if you miss. So they'll back themselves. The conversation they will have had is they will have gone, well, if we throw it from two to two, Okay, there's no confusion there, folks, that we've got to two people we bowling at once. That is uh, two separate rinks. And you can <laughs> just see, it is again, the, the two-meter two mark. mark. Great stuff there, and that's a great plan, game plan that they're executing here. Peter Blucher has gone somewhere. Let's see if we can take a moment. So that's score, 8-5. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, I'm not sure if we've... Uh, We'll keep you up to date with what's coming up the next couple of days there, Alex, because uh, so tomorrow we've got singles. Women's singles. Right, and of course the women's singles is 88 entries. So uh, who's our champion in the women's singles that we should be looking at? Uh, Taylor Bruce is the defending champion in the women's singles, and she's just uh, uh, hot off the back of winning the World uh, Singles Champion of Champions event as well. Which that she, was in Nino, was it? It was in Nino, yeah. She qualified for that uh, through winning the New Zealand singles. And just last month as well. No, was it this month? We'd it wasn't that long ago. No, we're in month. January now, so yeah. it was December. Yeah, and it was a great effort from Taylor. So she's uh, in the form of her life at the moment and will be, I think, a hot favourite. Uh, maybe a second favourite. Give me a couple of other names that I should be looking for. Uh, Selena, Selena Goddard, I think, will be a hard one to beat. Uh, she's in her home track in Auckland, has lost a couple of singles files in the last few years. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Deb White will have fond memories of Auckland as well. She won yeah. the singles here. Uh, last these time are, these are all names that are really at the uh, top echelon of uh, bowls around the country, whether it was the Champion of Champions or whether it's just been the... When we've had the teams, uh, we've had, what was the tournament in Nelson, I think we had uh, recently as well. That's right. Uh, so, yep. And the other one I'd look out for, Dave, um, before we move on to the game, I think Sandra Keith is going to give it a real good go. She skipped okay. and won the New Zealand Peers last year. And she hasn't won the singles for about 10 years now, so I think she's due to to, <laughs> to win another one and okay. put that in her list of achievements. And back now that we have all of our bowlers back, and this is uh, Peter Blucher. I, I love where those uh, two bowls are just situated, though, at the moment. Uh, either side of the jack there, Alex. Blucher's bowl is just too far, too deep. Yeah. Look at that. Superb. Well, only good thing about that bowl from Peter is that it stayed on the rink and it's, pa it's past the head. So if the jack does move back, it might come in helpful. But Roger Stevens certainly playing exceptional bowls here on that planned 2-2 two to two, uh, metre length. Well, he's going to have to come in quite a lot here. Oh, I think it'll turn enough oh, it for has. him. Almost too much. Don't move the jack. Oh, oh, it's a calamity. Oh, he's gone okay. It's worked out okay. It's, it's okay. I think he's playing with uh, Aero Optima Bowls, uh, Dave. Uh, and what do they that. provide? What's different about them? They're the biggest uh, swinging modern bowl that you can buy. Uh, so they'll turn the most that you can get sort of for uh, a, a bowl that you can buy new. Uh, as, as and, uh, oh, where's this one coming from? To... Uh, not bad. So when you uh, talk about the swinging bowls, uh, the restrictions... <laughs> How much swing can a bowl have? Yeah, there's a minimum amount somewhere in the law that says a bowl cannot turn any less than X amount over X distance. Um, I could. I would you, would you prefer you. A, a, a straighter bowl to a swinging bowl? In, well, like in certain countries in New Zealand, uh, would would it be better to have more of a swing, or is there really not that much difference? Well, there's been a shift over the last 30 years uh, to well, it sort of bounced back a little bit. So from say, sorry, you can just hear the wind there in the uh, microphones. <laughs> uh, that is what. Uh, oh, <laughs> just as the, the camera shook a little bit as well. That is what the players are having to contend with. It's blustery winds. Yeah. And sorry, Alex, the that's no the shift. Uh, so from the mid 80s until about 2010, bowls got straighter and straighter and straighter. Hence the light board on something called the Classic 2, which was a narrower, uh, a tighter running bowl. Was that bowl. because people wanted to drive more and be more aggressive? Or, uh, no? It no. was, it was. well, that was part of it. Uh, but also, if a bowl doesn't swing the as Peter much... The Peter Ballas drive. Yeah. People loved it, didn't they? Yeah, they did. It becomes easier to draw consistently if your bowl doesn't turn as much because you can miss by more and finish in the same or similar spot. So they made the game easier, essentially. Uh, but then the bowls got a bit too straight. So over the last <laughs> 10 years or so, we've seen a move back towards the bowls like the Optimus. And this is a very wide bowl here from Mike Kernham. We'll see how much it comes back in. 
I think probably missed his line a little bit. Uh, but we've seen we've seen a, a shift turn. a shift back towards slightly more swinging bowls. Uh, the reason being, if you play on a green that isn't perfect, it's a bit bumpy, or there may be a straightener. If you've got a straight bowl, it doesn't fight it at all, so your bowl can get knocked off course. Whereas a swinging bowl, not so. As we see, Adam Blucher here looking to draw the shot. If he's got late turn, he's done it. If it sits down, if it sits down, it's not going to. Someone needs to jump up and down yeah, or a exactly. gust of wind or something. Up. Not too many earthquakes in Auckland, so it's not going to do much there. Not a good one to correct from the air for Adam, Adam Blucher. It wasn't actually that far away. When you look at the closest, so from that angle, it looks as though we've got the light blue at, uh, what's that, 10 o'clock? Yeah, I'd say so. And Cooney here looking. This is a good bowl here, Dave. This one is going to push it further. Lovely correction. I think they're only holding one. I think that blue that's now at, say, 9 o'clock is the shot. And it looks like a measure to me between 6 o'clock and 3 o'clock, which would be the two blue or one blue, depending. But Adam, a bowl to go, I would expect him to make a correction here. it here. comes. He doesn't knock around. He just steps up and lets it go. This is... Oh, that was a little bit unlucky, to be fair. Uh, he was in the area. Uh, but it's going to be more points to Kernahan. Three. Three? To Kernahan wow. and Stevens. Did we miss a couple? I, must, I blame the camera. <laughs> that can't be my well, eyes. Three, so we've gone... What was it? Uh, two, four. Uh, that we had a two, two, four, two, three. Should be eleven, five now. Just waiting on that score to be updated. But anyway, significant scoring uh, from Mike Kernahan and uh, yeah, also Roger Stevens for the Bluchers. Now this is an opportunity here. Roger Stevens has misthrown the jack, in my opinion, because that is not to the two-meter mark. That's a short end. Uh, for their standards. So I was just about to say Blucher and Blucher, they won't be hitting the panic button yet, but they haven't scored in a while against a classy team. They're 5-11 down. They need to score this end. Maybe with that shorter jack, it's an opportunity for Peter to get closer. I say as Roger yeah. Stevens just puts it right draws in front. a toucher. He's touched it a little bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the end of that plan. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I suppose if you're going to miss throw the jack, drawing a touch is a good way to... You, you'd get back in your skips good books, wouldn't you? I think Mike will probably forgive him for that. When in this case should you go on the drive and try and knock that Stevens bowl out the way? Good question. Um, it depends who you've got leading for you. So Peter's quite an aggressive bowler. Right. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Peter with a second or third have a go at it. I quite like that. If you've got a bowler who, who uh, has a good drive on them at lead, I'm quite happy to use them early then doesn't he have to come incredibly straight or come on the... Let's just watch this one come in. I think, he's going, on the go, jack, I think he's going to go it. He'd, come on the jack side, though. He has to come in on the jack side to push it away. Yeah, you'd look for your bigger target. and Almost no, a, not. a kill is fine. Right. Because if you kill it, you replay the end. So Peter could play on his backhand side and just look to hit that blue ball. Wouldn't Get, that connect? If he hits it on the wrong angle, it's going to connect with the jack. So that may kill it. Mm-hmm but then he otherwise has to come on the forehand side and actually knock them out the way. Yeah, when you're talking sort of uh, drive speed, you're sort of, the speed it's moving at, if he hit the blow, the jack would kill anyway. Okay, so you're pretty much going to kill the He's kill just, the, 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 the The goal is to kill it. If something luckier than that happens, it's happy Great. days. <laughs> but this... But look, I mean, look at this bowl uh, here from nuts. Roger. I think he has to drive that. I think he has to just have a go. Here we go. Uh, Peter yep. Blute, you're on yeah, the drive. it up. He won't be short, I can tell you that. Well, it's a rip. Here we go. He's close here. Peter Blucher, square. Oh, what a bowl. Oh, he followed it. He followed what a it. bowl. Amazing. Oh. Clap it. Someone clap. Did you see that? Can we get a replay? I'd like to see a replay. <laughs> he just, uh, that bowl just followed it as well. So like I said, he was aiming for the kill. Anything better than that is happy days because he hit what he was going for. Wow. But that, I mean, you couldn't get a better Are we result. Get a smile? When he comes down, he, oh, it's a high five this time with the sun. I would be smiling. That's brilliant stuff there. <laughs> the look at Stevens is like, mm, okay. I put <laughs> everything in front there. Absolutely brilliant stuff there from Peter Blucher. Three down. Here's Here the go. replay. Look Which, at this. Watch this. Hits it as plumb as you can get it. Dead square. Bang. Bowls go everywhere. And he actually got a second wick. His collision ball got a second wick off yeah. the blue. And sits behind. Three down to three up. Thank you for coming. Wow. Oh, Hang on, we've got Kernahan here. He's just going to do something to spoil all of this, isn't he? <laughs> Maybe. We're going to call him the spoiler. <laughs>
Well, he's almost connecting oh. with the other uh, other rink as well. There we go. We've got a bit of a drive on that other rink. Yeah, he's a bit short there, Kearney. So now for Adam. Oh, yeah. So what does he have to do? So Peter didn't get a lucky result. He got a good result. There's a slight difference. Right. Adam wants to turn the screw. So he's on his forehand. You want to go, look, I know that we've got a good result here. I have to draw as close as I can. And, and he's that's doing what very he's done. well. That's a really good timing there from Adam Blucher. Holding three now. This is what the Bluchers needed. If they can find a way to score on this end. Kearney just seeing if the bowl's in or out. What are they Adam doing here? Getting a different it's view. alive. Just jumping up at the back there, trying to get a different view. Because it's so wide, they've got to keep out of the way of the yeah, so they, rink. I think they're looking to see if Adam's bowl is in the rink or out of the rink. So you can see that peg that Mike Kernahan standing by by his right foot. There's another peg across from him. Yeah. There we go. So you put what they're doing is putting the mat against the bowl but of Adams, then, and if they can see the peg, it's in. And if they can't see the peg, it's this, not in. It's not the most technical way of doing things, but it, if it's effective, seems to work, and it indicates that it was in there. So they are both in. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thumbs up. Got a thumbs up there from Kearney. Oh, his forehand, classic delivery. Takes a step, swings the arm. Smooth as can be. Can your bowl go outside and then come back in? Mm -hmm. to be st it's still considered live? Yeah, so his bowl, it's going to get taken off. It was outside and now it's going to be taken away. As okay. long as you come back into the rink, uh, right. you're, you're fine. Okay, so you can, I don't know how far, you can swing it around. Yeah, it's a risk that you take when you opt to play a hand that's going to take your bowl outside is that it might not come back in. Uh, and that sort of uh, and factors into the decision. It's almost making. racing the, the jack down. Yeah, Adam Blucher willing this one to go on. If he beats Kernahan's bowl, it That's sits at 10 o'clock. <laughs> no, oh, no, pushing got it on. the arms flying in the air. That could have been a four if everything all stayed the same. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to because we've got Kernahan now with his final on this, the eighth end. I remember they scored the last four ends in a row, a two, a four, a two, and a, a three, I think it was. Kernahan here looking to make a correction. Roger Stevens very interested in this. It's going to come around too much, I believe. Going to turn. Yeah, you're right there, Dave. Oh, that could help with preventing one. Maybe probably, it's two, is it? Yeah, I think he's probably cut it down to two. It's and we can see they're just going to be careful there that they don't walk in the way of another bowl. Yeah, super duper important for Adam Blucher uh, to make this. We call it a bonus bowl. There's no right of reply. Mike can't do anything. He's played his three bowls. You want to make this count for three here. The Bluchers get back to within three points. I think the big, biggest thing is that he doesn't actually muck up what they've set up. <laughs> That's true. That would Dad be, would that never would be, talk to you again. Would be calamitous. Adam Blucher here. He's taken a tight line. If he gets a good result. Oh, he might. Oh, he could have got a wick, but he didn't. All right, so we're on two, maybe, yeah, two. It's been a roller coaster of an end, Dave. <laughs> it, was, it was a fun end. It was almost in the other rink as well. Lots of stuff happened. And so it should be a two. So the uh, Luchas, father and son, should go up to number seven, uh, or seven points, that is, as we go forth into the ninth end of 18. The weather looks better. Well, certainly no rain at the present time. Obviously, much improved performance. And we're quite tight again, as you can see, with the other rink. Uh, not sure who we've got in that other rink there, but uh, looking here, we've seen that the jack is about halfway up. Yeah, so we've seen a short, a shorter jack played again. Now, Rogers, uh, they've been, Roger and Kearney have been playing two metre to two metre for most of the game. Uh, Mackenzie Blucher there, the daughter in the background. Right. As one uh, I was in the New Zealand development team for a little while, dabbles and bowls at the moment. What was I saying, Dave? Ah, they're playing two to two. Kearney and Stevens playing two to two. Roger Stevens accidentally threw a short jack. But to be fair to him, then put three bowls within a few inches yeah, of the true. jack. Yeah. Uh, that was a great drive that we had coming It was, from. yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know what I think about the, the length. I think Roger played three great bowls and Peter played one great bowl. This one's coming around nicely. And just in front, or to the side slightly. Tell you what it does mean, though, Dave, is that if Peter's hit one drive, they'll be inclined if, you know, it gives you a bit of confidence. You know, with your lead with Peter, even in this situation with this third bowl, if Roger puts another bowl close, 
you may as well go, well, last time Roger put a couple of bowls close, you smacked it and it went well. <laughs> Why not try it again? <laughs> In the technical terms of smack it, let's see what we've got here from Roger Stevens. On his forehand side, giving his bowl a chance to come back. I'm not sure if he's got the weight here, Dave. Doesn't appear to be. Oh, it'll be tempting. So what are you going to do on this one if you're Peter Blucher? Just nice and steady. Yeah, on looking forehand. on the forehand side. He's got two balls well past the head. So he's looking to make a correction, which he may have done here. It's a lovely line if he runs it out. Needs it to keep going. And a second shot there. The only downside to that is he's obscured the jack a little bit, which removes a, a potential shot for Adam Blucher. Who may have been thinking about going bowl or jack into the ditch. Can't do that anymore. Roger Stevens here looking to make it two. Slightly overplayed, but good enough. And I think Adam just has to draw close here, Dave. Well, Alex, we were talking about uh, the uh, how much turn you can have on a particular bowl. What about the weight of bowls at the present time? Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's uh, maximum minimums. There is. Um, they've got heavier over time. That's interesting. And why would that be? Um, they've got heavy over time. They've got de a denser composite. So uh, in the old days, we used to play with wood. Lignum vitae was the wood. It's the only wood that sinks in the water. Um, and that was quite a dense wood. Uh, and we moved to composite bowls, which are made of uh, a condensed plastic. Uh, so it's a, bit, um, it's a bit like the darts analogy. They're made of tungsten. Right. Bowls are made of condensed plastic. The heavier bowl doesn't get blown so around by the wind So it's the material of the bowl that's changed and made it heavier? A heavier composite, yep. Yeah, so they're, um, I think we used to have he uh, normal so normal weighted plastic bowls and heavyweight plastic bowls, but I think they're all heavyweights now. So they're just a, it's a denser composite than what it used to be. And the sizes range between zero and six, I think, uh, which obviously affects the weight slightly based on the size of your hands. Right, so um, that, that's what it reflects on, is the, if you have bigger bigger hands, which uh, number would you choose? Yeah, the uh, larger number, so, so a five or a, a six. Five yeah. or a six, okay. Uh, they sort of rare uh, fives and sixes are rare to see. Most bowls, uh, men usually play between a, with a three and a four, and um, even if you had bigger hands, even if you're physically, you know, yeah, a, that a seems to be the way it's person. it's it's uh, okay. it's moved towards now. Threes or fours uh, for most people. That's uh, very wide. They're not coming around enough. Kernahan, willing that. At least it's got some late turn. Good weight twice, and they're holding a couple. Adam here. Interesting, the the grip there that Adam Blucher uses. It's almost a, he brings his hand around slightly inward, but yeah, it's going to be good this time. Great shot there from Adam Blucher. What a bowl. Drawing a front toucher. That's going to be hard. Yep. Hard to get back to. <laughs> and, uh, we'll call that the wind. Oh. In the meantime, uh, Kernahan's... Uh, Thinking, how can I get around this one? Again, very calm. Starts with the feet together. On the forehand side. Smooth as you like. And these are the shots that just rip your little ration book if he can draw the shot here. Oh, it's a big Dave. gap. Oh, Kernahan, that's close. Good. Close to the jack. He's oh, got it. that's annoying. Absolutely class. I mean, it's superb. But for the Bluchers, you've just got to think. Adam Blucher, the youngsters, put it right there. Teenager puts it there perfectly, has at least one point going to them. And then, well, you get Kernahan just coming through and spoiling it and yeah. switching it all around. Well, I mean, when you look at the way that he was sitting, Adam had a bowl four inches away from the jack, and maybe closer. You would sort of, he would have expected to score a point there, eight times out of ten. Yeah. Uh, so just classy there from, from Mike Kernahan, and that sort of... It's so uh, frustrating, particularly as a youngster, or well, any age, I guess, that you've done everything you can, mm. and then <laughs> he comes along and spoils it. Yeah, and they're the sort of shots that when you're the person playing them, it gives you all the confidence in the world as well. You just go, look. Uh, this one too that. long? See the long end, so Kearney's had the chat with Stevens. Now, if it's overthrown from the two and doesn't go in the ditch, it gets put on the two-metre mark, so that's the, they've probably got uh, a metre and a half to play with. In regards to where they where they roll the jack, if you want it to be put on the two meter, and back to that two to two length. Roger on the backhand, and as the score, 
twelve seven now, Dave, or eleven eleven seven? I've it not been. Should be twelve. I think should twelve. Be at least uh, one. Well, it should be one. It would have been two from the last end. It's definitely one. Yeah, but it depends how far back uh, Mike trailed the jack, I suppose. And there we go. We've got the twelve seven now as we come into the eleventh end. Just uh, just past the halfway mark. And uh, we have Kernahan and Stevens here from the Northeast Valley out of Dunedin up against the Tiara 2. Father and son combination of the Bluchers. And on the backhand there. The wind appears to have calmed slightly. Or perhaps not. Maybe blowing the <laughs> camera over slightly. Uh, this one coming around there from Stevens. It's pretty nice. And we might get you uh, in the next few minutes, Alex, to update us with any other scores. If we have any more completed, oh, just, you can yeah, take a little just, look through. I was just having a little look at that, As Dave. we get Peter Blucher just uh, coming on the backhand, looks at it. Not sure whether he's happy or unhappy. Gets a little bit of a pause. No, it's probably going to be too much in the end. One interesting result that's come through in the women's singles is uh, we spoke about Debbie White and Sandra Keith both being uh, sort of... You haven't put a curse on one of them, have you? maybe, uh, favourites to sort of go through. They played each other, Dave. Debbie White oh. played Sandra Keith. And Debbie, I can report, was the winner of that game. 21 shots to eight. Ooh, uh, so that's a, a significant a, uh, win. A big win there uh, for Debbie White in that women's singles. And I'll, I'll keep having a, a nosy through. Taylor Bruce has lost a game. Oh. Defending champion. Looks like she... <laughs> but you don't want to be mentioned by Alex at this rate because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not sounding good. Oh. Maybe she hasn't lost a game. What's it say? Played two, won one, lost one. Okay, well... I'm not sure who beat her yet. Okay, we'll come back to that. But uh, just interesting results coming through so far. And in the meantime, let's take a look here. And we are... Interesting what we're seeing here, Alex. Uh, just with a couple way back, one close, and uh, three in front. Yeah, so we see... Yeah, that is interesting. It'll be frustrating for Peter to have put three bowls on the same same weight and not have made that little correction because they they will all have felt pretty close out of his hand. Uh, but a great end for for Kernahan and Stevens because of course if you don't have back bowls it's hard to make more than one point happen. Adam will be well you know if Adam can score one point here, he's done well because he's got nowhere he can move the jack back to to score multiple. So he, his bowls will be doing not all the work so to so to speak. Could we suggest that for younger bowlers, particularly teenagers, that they want to bowl harder and faster? Like a drive is just, you just want to go for it? Yeah, we talk about uh, young bowlers having no fear, um, and it can make them really da really dangerous to play because they don't think too much. There's not there's not scar tissue there from having uh, <laughs> you know, played bad bowls or, or being aggressive and good unlucky. They just go for it. Uh, so we talk about them having no fear, and that's sort of... Uh, I'd say a hallmark of a lot of the, the younger bowlers that, that come through for that first six or seven seasons as they just play with no fear. They look in front of them, they go, that's the shot I want to play, and then they go and play so it. So would that have been Selena Goddard for quite some time when she first came through? Was she like that? Um, was she a bit more calculated because she had that bowls upbringing? And yeah, for me, Selena was always a bit more... Okay, not so aggressive, but she can still just play whatever she sees. Right. That's how yeah. good she is at bowls. Um, but certainly, yeah, like I think uh, players like, like Adam, very talented, and they just sort of rely on that talent. They see a shot that they want to play, and they just go, oh, that's what I'm going to That's what I'm gonna do, whereas you find the more mature bowlers <laughs> uh, tend, you've had a bit of scar tissue by then, so you tend to play a different game, and Adam just swooping underneath the head there. See his bowl being pulled out of the ditch by his dad. So just a bit tighter than he would have liked to be. And Kernahan again, just the quite a front on start sometimes. Yeah. His feet together, which makes his body front on, and then just steps up with uh, the one leg. On the backhand. This is close here from Kearney. Let's see how it comes in. This is great bowls from these two. Very steady. Those four bowls are. They're not that far away from the jet. They look like they're a distance, only because of the cameras, the angles here. There's not much context. But Peter Blucher's foot is the distance that there is between the jack and the closest bowl. That's not, you know, <laughs> we're not yeah. talking huge dif distances no, no, here. There's four, four bowls right near the jack. 
And Peter asking for Adam to arrive with weight on his forehand side. Got bowls to, to punch up. He won't be short here. That was a fairly smooth exit out of the hand there for... Very close here, Adam Blucher. It's looking good. He's down on his haunches. Oh. Great bowl. Great bowl. Now, is that... Oh, just rolled a little bit further. He deserves one out of that. That was a well-played shot there from Adam. Very controlled on the weight. You know, fickle. Great shot. Well done there to Adam Blucher, the teenager. And uh, no mucking around as we get stuck into the the next end. Yeah, he was under a lot of pressure there too, Dave. They are staring down the barrel. 12-7 down they were after uh, 10 ends or on the 10th end of 18. Probably four down on the head. That was a great shot there uh, from the young Adam Blucher. And nice to get one back as well. So it just means they remain in the contest. They haven't let it escape completely. Absolutely. Well, well. For a while, it was looking that way. It was. I think uh, there's been a couple of key bowls for me. Obviously, Peter, Peter's drive when he was three down, with three right. bowls within, you know, essentially touching the jack. Uh, to turn that head around was good. So they, they still got a real chance here to a father and son combination. See How would you bowl uh, with your father? Would it be a good team? Um, probably not. <laughs> okay. Probably not. Probably not a good team. Families are interesting. Well, I've play, played a lot of indoor bowls with my family, so you either had happy car rides home after the tournament or very quiet ones. All right, we'll leave that at that. In the meantime, <laughs> let's move on to Peter Blucher <laughs> and from the Tiara Two Club. But having you really bring that around. Yeah, so it's not his, working. His weight's been good twice. This is an example of what happens sometimes. This is a very short jack. And because the bowl isn't travelling as far, it doesn't have as much time to turn. So you don't have to take as much green. That green that he took there, if the jack had been well down at the two metre, would have been okay. His bowl would have come back into the centre line. But because it's a short jack, the bowl hasn't got as far to travel, so it, uh, it held a little bit. Third time's a charm, says Adam. <laughs> That's very positive. Skipping, and Peter has taken his green in there. It's a better effort here from Peter Blucher. On his back end. Adam asking it to hold, not to be. Roger here on the forehand side. Got chances here have been pretty good. Roger Stevens leading well this game. That's what he was asked to do, just to bowl past the head. But we still have a very large gap there, just to the right of the jack. And no one's managed to put it close coming in on that uh, backhand side at the moment, Alex. It's a huge gap. And I'm sure Kernahan's seen that gap and thinking... Yeah, I, I don't mind coming in from that uh, backhand side. Yeah, for sure. I see Adam there. Oh, so the, he's going to give it a go. On the backhand himself, we call that the open hand. Nothing in the way. We're willing it to hold. We're willing it to hold. It's Just passing through that little bit. Well, Kernahan's going to see that gap and see what happened uh, with. I think the player's Adam's forehand ball. by the looks. Oh, yes. Perhaps there's a bowl. We'll just have a look. Oh, oh I suppose he's in the area. The, the thing about the forehand is if he's narrow, he can hit his own team's bowl up a little bit, which isn't bad. Uh, but just finding this empty space, a looser head here uh, from these players. But again, we're seeing that big gap that's saying, hey, have a go. It is. Adam here stalking after this ball. He looks on the narrow side to me. He's going to need to rest on that blue ball. Oh. Yeah, he didn't deserve a good result there. So has Cunningham got to go forehand or backhand? I think he's committed to the forehand based on... Oh, there you go. go. Yeah, forehand there. He's told where to put it. I believe Mike's original bucket hat is still on his bowls bag, Dave. I think, um, Funny. I, think, I think he was telling me, I must keep it there for luck. I imagine he could, wouldn't be able to wear it anymore, as it would be about 40 years old. <laughs> exactly. And where's that one? So at the moment we're looking at 
two, there's the measuring. Uh, you can hear the wind again, it's got back up again. Just said more green than your last one, we're three down. So, like, this is a big moment in the game. So more green than the last one. That means he's got to swing it out wide earlier. Yeah, he hasn't. He hasn't. He hasn't given it the weight. No, it's going to come around too much again. Oh, it's a big end in the context of the game. It's disappointing for the Bluchers. This might be the end that they look back on and think, this is this is where the game got away from us. They, are, they trail 8-12 on the 11th end, and they're about to drop probably a four here. And it's going to make it a real challenge to come back. I'll find out how they went in the first game, eh, Dave? And we can get a... I'll press the right button. Kernahan not adding a bonus there. He'll be disappointed with that. Well, we should still get a three, and I believe we're going to get a three. Haven't seen the indication, but we would suggest... Here we go. Taking a little bit of a measure now. And... So, uh... It's going to be... A Three or a four? Yeah, we'll see how this one goes. Adam's bowl there that was just measured. Now going against. Well, from this camera angle, it looks as though Adam Blucher will miss out. But we'll just see. No. Three? No? Two, I think I heard. Really? Okay, it's we're seeing the, things. Good for the Bluchers. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I mean, didn't go their way, but it was still could have been a lot worse. So, so let's uh, wait for the score to tick over. And the first game, Dave... That they played today. Uh, the Bluchers were defeated 22-9 by Frankie Lim and Sean Pinnell. And in the second round, which was the previous game, they won. They beat Kerry Chapman and Tully Balog 14-12. That's a good win against a very good team. Gary's played for New Zealand before, and Tony's a very well-known bowler on the Auckland thing. So they won out of two at the moment. So this is the third one for the Bluchers, okay. This is the third game. So they could afford to lose this game and just have, well, just have to win. Right. If they lose this game, they have to win all three tomorrow as the as the equation for the Bluchers. Whereas Kernahan and Stevens, it looks like, if I have a look here, on Bowls Hub Aotearoa, they won their second game 23-9 against Billy Fulton and Tony Garelja, which is a good win against a good team. And in their first game... They are somewhere. Well, this one's they a little won short. To 10. Mm. A little bit short there, but uh, from Stevens. But it's almost in the line. It's, yeah, it's right on the line. And <laughs> let's see what Adam is indicating here. Go, Dad! <laughs> uh, not quite. Well, he oh, no, actually, made it. It was better. Made it for one. 8 14 down. They do need to be scoring probably. Five, five or six of the next ends of the next seven ends, probably five of the next seven. Roger here on the back end. That's beautiful correction there from Roger Stevens. But unlucky that it's both set against the bias, but say la vie. It's uh, just painfully slow the way it just rolled in, getting closer and closer at every roll. In a way. <laughs> and uh, well, Adam Blucher indicating something it hurts as a player when that happens too dave because yeah. all you wanted to do is sit with the bias where it's going to be a good bowl and then it just all these uh, two not mucking around him. no it's, it's it's not a slow game is it certainly right into their work roger looking for a bowl another one close is taking a good line here good shot a little bit of chalk left on that bowl dave <laughs> Well, we haven't had any rain for quite some time, but you can certainly hear the wind. <laughs> Cut it again, Adam, he says. He'll be dis he's disappointed with himself there. That's, that's uh, disappointing bowls there from Peter Blucher. His weight is perfect, but just missing the line on the green. And it, it makes it a challenge for Adam again, a challenge to score. <laughs> An attempt at a low five. A challenge to score multiple points here which is really what they need to be doing the bluchers and to do that you need just a couple of bowls past the head and with a good with a good line so in the 12th of 18 ends here in the somerset national singles and pairs we're at the browns bay bowling club which is the center club as such out of about 19 or 20 clubs great to have everybody tuning in and watching
on the Bowls New Zealand YouTube coverage. Of course, this event does go for another five days. We have the pairs, singles, men's and women's, and also the open disability singles, open disability pairs as well. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a bonanza of bowls, really, Dave, and great to have it back at the, the uh, Browns Bay Bowling Club as headquarters. They haven't been the headquarters for the Nationals for a while. Now remember, of course, um, oh, we just watched this bowl here from Adam Blucher. That's a great that's, shot. That's good. Is that going to be the best of the moment from this angle? It looks that way, but I'm not yeah, it is. Sure. It is the shot. Um, we are live streaming every day, Dave. And if if you're watching this on our YouTube, which you must be doing, and you want to get notified when we go live, uh, please press the subscribe button. And I think there's a bell somewhere that you're meant to click. Okay, there's a bell, and don't forget there's that other one, the ladder as well. I mean, while this one's coming in very nicely from Kunahan, too strong. Oh, good effort. Yes, so there you go. click the subscribe button on the YouTube and the bell to be notified when we're live. And if you want to check out the full results, right. Bowls Up Aotearoa is the place to go. And you can get there via our website and our Facebook page uh, where we have the, the results sitting. And you want to click through to the to the ladder. It's probably the easiest place to see who's done what. Right. Adam Blucher here. Has he done it two in a row? Slightly overplayed. Beautiful green. That was a great first bowl of Adams. Doing a lot of heavy lifting here. And Mike Kernahan has one bowl at the back. But, I mean, he's 14 eight up. I think we'll see a mature bowl here, Dave. I think we'll see him just look to draw close. If he drops one, he drops one. On the backhand side, the Needham bucket hat. Going to get that late turn. It's turning too fast, I think. Slightly overplaying that bowl. He was looking actually to move it back to where his bowl's just finished on the rake. Looking to punch up the blue or take the jack back for two or three. But looking like Adam is certainly holding one. So they're holding one. And the opportunity here for Blucher to, I guess, make it more than one. I think all he has is a draw for two, really. Those two bowls are low of the jack, which means if, if he hits them, it's likely they're going to go on to it. So he just wants to make this one count. See if you can get yourself in the double figures within four points. After 12 ends, is close. He's not far away here. Adam Blucher down to his weight. Overplayed it. Disappointing as a player when your first bowl is perfect and your second is slightly further away and your third is further away again. <laughs> Because you expect to do it in the other <laughs> in the other order, but a, a good well there from Adam to to score the shot. And nine fourteen is the score now. After twelve ends, still in with a chance here. Blucher and Blucher, keeping well in touch. And uh, the jack just a little bit wide, so he's wanting it down a bit yeah. further. They're looking to throw <laughs> short jacks. Now I wouldn't be surprised if Mike asks no he's not going to the mat must be far enough back it looks close to being too short bleacher willing the bowl down we saw peter be wide here last time in this direction a few times tony garelger in the background to our right well-known bowler dave from the henderson bowling club the and he's involved he's in wearing. the next rink, is he? Yes, he is playing a Pringle Park team whose names escape me. Well, everybody having to adjust to this short jack, and uh, so far, would you be tempted to really push the jack back as much as you can? Depends how you're feeling. Uh, it's sort of, it's a small target, so it's hard to do, but with the short jacks, one of the things that can happen is they're an easy... That's a great shot here from Peter Blucher. They're an easier end to kill because the distance between the jack and the ditch is longer. So there's more chance, once you hit it, of it going to the left or the right. So short jacks are quite a good end to, uh, length to play if you're down and looking for numbers uh, because you can be quite aggressive on them and it's either a kill or or not sort of thing. And the, This is the best end here we've seen from Peter Blucher in some time. And the worst end from Roger Stevens, who's just <laughs> That's right. gone flying past with his second bowl. Peter Blucher looking to make hay while the sun shines. Willing this bowl to hold past the front blue. And 
son Adam pointing at where oh. he wants it to go. He was hoping that was going to get a little wick off the front one, not to be. And if Roger misses this, Adam's going to kind of cross over holding the shot, which will be a nice feeling. Roger on the forehand. This is the line, though. This is a classy third bowl here from Roger Stevens. Slightly overplayed it. Cut it down to one. So the Blutch is holding one on the crossover, Dave, which is good news for them. Trailing 9-14 on the 13th end of 18. They can score here. The game begins to get even more interesting. I think we'll see Adam play on his backhand with his first bowl. Looking to draw to Roger's bowl here. Well, from the previous end where we had the gap on the backhand side, it's on the forehand side this time. It is, and it'll be inviting for it'll be inviting for Mike because he's yep. got that position bowl of Rogers at the back, whereas Adam's playing his backhand side. But he it's going want okay to move the jack. Got to be that. That's that's unfortunate. And uh, which one's going to be the closest? Is Adam's? Oh, it's going to be. Yeah, there's an irony there, Dave, because Adam would have played the backhand so that he didn't move the jack to the blue bowl yep. that he's moved the jack to. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> the <laughs> irony is that it hasn't really worked out that well. He may still have one. Yeah, it's, uh, he'll be disappointed that it's a bit, a bit ironic. Mike Cunahan here on the forehand. Now, is he up, up, up or down? No one seems to be saying anything about it. Adam here, taking more green. Just drifting past. So at the moment we're looking at possibly one to the Bluchers. The way they're playing, I'm not so sure. I think he may have given the shot away, Adam. I think he may have popped the jack back too far. And I think that blue bowl that sits at five well, o'clock that's going to be my shot. That's going to be my tape measure on this one because at the moment... Just use your finger oh. measures from the, <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> oh. oh, is that going to help? No, it didn't really go anywhere, did it? No, nah, it didn't. Just sort of rocked it a little bit. May have oh. moved it. Uh, <laughs> There's the wind, folks. <laughs> look up at the sky. On the backhand, Adam Bleacher. Natural delivery. A lot of body movement. And this one here, looking a bit better. If he gets his dad's bowl square, it's good. Needs it square. Oh, didn't uh, have the weight. Be disappointed with that. And the wind. Look at the wind. Well, you can just hear it. If you can't see it, you can hear it. And are we getting out of tape measure here? I believe. Oh, there's Mike's got one more bowl to go. Oh, he does? Yeah, why do you say two? How can you be holding two? Two, really? Where is the second one? <laughs> okay. Well... We're not too sure if it is two. Oh, well, let's just see what they do, maybe. Dave. And that looks pretty oh, straight to me. Oh, maybe you're saying we're two down. Oh, I understand what you're saying. Mike would have said, how many is that bowl worth? That black right. bowl of Adam Bluchus? And, and Stevens would have said, it's worth two points if you get rid of it. Okay. So we just missed the, the communication from, from <laughs> Kernahan there. Well, we couldn't hear for the wind. Yeah. But in the meantime, is that... One for the Bluchers. One for the one for the Bluchers it'll okay. be. Or well, Mike wouldn't have had a nibble there. So that back within Kui here. Is yeah. it ten? Must be ten fourteen. And up to the thirteenth uh, end. So still a little way to go, albeit that out of these wow uh, next five ends. They're gonna have to come up with a few points anyway. Five the need five points the Bluchers to overtake. Mm. A point each from the next five end or, or something they, bigger yeah, and they, dramatic. They were well within Kui. I think if they could be in their head, they'll think if we get to that, so they're on the 14th end now, 15, 16, 17, 18, so there's five ends to go. If they win three out of five ends, which is doable, they should be within two two points on the last end, and anything can happen. So they've stayed. I've been impressed with how well they've stayed with Mike Kernahan yeah. and, and, and Stephen Sierra. Well, they were up by five, and then just dropped away significantly from there. And it did look at one stage like it was going to be a blowout score, didn't it? You yeah. know, it was just beginning to look like a procession uh, for Kernahan and Stevens, but it's not been all their way this last few ends. And what's been some of the highest scores that you've seen in a tournament like this, some of those blowouts? Uh, often you see a team get to 30, into the 30s. 
uh, and over over 18 ends. Of course, you can uh, concede at any point in the game of bowls. So when it becomes, if I'm 21 down. <laughs> Yeah. After 10 ends, I'll shake your hand and go, and we'll have a cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. gonna, oh, and that one's no just been knocked the, closer ex- behind. Extending the pain, but sometimes the games are played out uh, because people are there to play bowls, and you see well, the scores true. sort of extend. Occasionally, someone will get to 40 points, uh, but that's pretty rare. Oh, I would say it would be... That's painful. Yeah, it'll be close to the highest highest points that, that you can get. Roger Stevens here, looking to put another one close. I said one moved in by Peter... And it's a big ball here from Peter Blucher. He's throwing the jack to this length. So you'd like to think that he knows the weight to get his ball there. That came out of his hand pretty smooth. Adam giving this one a look. He can't be that far away here, Peter Blucher. Very close, looking to rest that ball. That's good oh, stuff that's, there. That's lovely. Not only did he get close to the jack, but he knocked the opponent's ball out of the way. Yeah, exactly what he would have wanted to do. Came out of his hand as smooth as you like. So did that one, though, from Roger Stevens. Looking to return the favour, I think. And it's not far away, Dave. So we watch this bowl here. How much is it going to turn? That late turn. Oh, oh, just out. Again, they cross over second, third, and fourth shot, but they don't have the shot. I'm not sure what hand Adam's going to play here. It'll be tempting... Oh, it's 50 50, eh? You know, well, you could follow your dad down and make looks it too. exposed, but then you can go through the gap on the mm. forehand. Mm. We'll see. Adam can make the decision and we'll just comment. <laughs> we'll just, we'll just, we'll commentate just say whether it was good or not. <laughs> Opting for his backhand. So he's looking to follow his dad down and make yeah. it too. Now you watch how it comes out of the hand there, almost out of the back of the hand, almost like a batonk shot. Yeah, very natural uh, delivery. Sort of like uh, you see that with people, because um, Adam would have grown up around a, a bowling club and you're allowed to sort of, when the adults have finished playing, get right. on the green and yeah. throw bowls up and down. <laughs> Try bat- baton almost yes. with bowls. Yeah, so it's sort of... I'm not sure sort that of... would really work with the greenkeeper. <laughs> a few dents. Only if, they, only if they don't see you, it's fine. Yeah, exactly. A few dents in the green. Now, what's he laughing about there? Something's happened down there. Adam, very... Uh, well, he was pretty happy about that. Animated. What we see there, Kernahan, one down on the head, four up on the card. And this bowl looking on the tight side. It's beginning to feel like the Bluchers are having some momentum here, Dave. If they can score again on this end, they'll be within two or three points of Kernahan and Stevens. And that very natural, it's a natural delivery. It's not a square follow through. It's just sort of, just out of his hand. And following it down the green. And this could be, this could work out quite nicely. If he this finishes one. in the eye, eh? That's what he's looking for. Oh, not quite. Which way is it going to sit? Oh, oh. He, he could be in. He could be it's in for standing second. on its end. And you just got to hope it just drops. Maybe the wind... Drops it in a little bit more. It's actually a good place for it to finish. You've spoken about earlier today, Dave. The bowl's been hiding the jack. Yep. From Mike's end, that bowl will be in the way of the jack. It'll be hard to see the target. Not that that means anything to Mike. On his back end, he's taken a lot of green here. Maximum green. No, oh, he doesn't want to edge that one in. Well, he does slightly. Mm, I think he's moved that in for two. I think the Bluchers now sit with two and a half. The bowl at four o'clock and the bowl at 12 o'clock will be the ones that are second and third. So we're up to our last bowl now with Adam Blucher. Yeah, this is a really important moment in the game for me. And what is uh, Dad going to say as advice? Oh, what, Sue Rot, Sue? Not much, actually. Just having a look. I mean, as the age-old question, do you put all your, all your eggs in one basket or do you be a bit defensive and put a bowl where you think the jack might go if Mike's to be aggressive? And that's well, what... We're that's, going on the forehand. Yeah, it's what Peter's opting for. He's saying, look, put a bowl back here where the jack could end up. Uh, it would have been real tempting just to make it a four. Say, so, look, you're four down now. Kearney, what have you got? And well, that's Far too wide. Yeah, poor bowl there from... Well, that's a shame because now you've got Kernahan who 
that's the last bowl, but it's just going to... Oh, what's happening? Look. Just seeing how many down they are, I think, whether it's two or three. I don't think Mike's going to be aggressive, though, here, Dave. I think he's just going to try and draw the shot. So is he going on the forehand or the back end? He's going forehand, do you think? Uh, I think the back end looks a little bit more open really? to me. And he's played two bowls on the back end already. There we go. So he's on the back end side. So if he draws second shot, he'll be happy. But we saw him do a very similar thing earlier on in the game when Adam had a bowl within a few inches of the jack. And just drew it off. So Kearney here, yep, on the backhand side, looking to rest on that bowl at 6 o'clock for shot. And he's not far away. It's beginning to drift, though. When's it coming back? No, it's... Uh, so this should be a two. A two for the Bluchers, we believe. At least a two. Sue Rossiter there in the background with a contraption on her leg. Hope she feels better soon. I wasn't aware that she had damaged herself. One of the... Uh, uh, often a head umpire or one of the ones in the upper echelons of the umpires, Dave. And Peter Blucher being asked to measure that now. So he's, two's been conceded. Two to the Blucher. So at a minimum, it's 12-14. This, this is game, a nice it's, little comeback. Yeah, it, uh, it's been a great game to watch. And I think they're going to have it. Oh, no, lost it. He kept the problem there was he had his thumb down on the, <laughs> on the button <laughs> at the wrong time. So he's measured Adam's bowl. Now we go to Kearney's. Oh, that's a. So it's two. Uh, no, it's, they're trying. No, they're both having a go. And the umpire at the back will be watching, going, "Come on, <laughs> <laughs> let me have a go at it." And so the measure stays the same. Let's see if they have to extend it any further. Well, this is some precise measuring here. What's happened? Well, no. Oh, here we go. You've got the umpire coming out. Oh, so this is good. Now, I'm sure this is an, um, an Eames. So how are we uh, testing this? Okay, so that's... So she's chopped the bowls to make sure they don't move. Right. Or the bowl that's out to make sure it doesn't move. And then she will um, go against the two. I think they're allowed a maximum of maybe, th I don't know, three or four back and forths. So we'll just watch this happen. Ooh. The lovely Margaret Eames, that's her name. It's just come to me in a flash of light. Um, one of the uh, top umpires in New Zealand turns up to most of our events, and her husband, uh, uh, Tony, a very good coach in the Nelson region. Well, she's just extended... I think it's one to Mike. Yeah, I think she extended the tape measure slightly for that second. No, going again. So Goodness. we see she can pass it through the jack and the bowl when she's measuring against Adam's bowls. Let's wait for this. Uh, ah, yeah, she's, so she's moved Mike's bowl, so it was one to Mike, which means it's two. All right. Okay, so two. Well, still significant in the fact that it takes the Bluchers to 12-14 down. And we are now up to the 14th, make that the 15th end. Relatively oh, it's fine getting conditions. A, it's getting exciting though, isn't it, this game, Dave? It, it is, it's great. Oh, like noise. Having a little bit of a comeback against the, well, the, oh, stays in. It does. Slightly unexpected pair in the sense that for about four ends in a row, Conahan and Stevens were just piling up the points. I mean, let's, let's put it into context, really. Um, uh, Mike Conahan has been playing top-level bowls literally probably for twice the length <laughs> that Adam has been on the planet for. That's He's the last man correct. to have won a Commonwealth Games medal for New Zealand. He won a bronze in the singles, and that was 20 years ago. Um, it's a very experienced team. Uh, he's playing with Roger Stevens, who's been playing inter-centre, top seven inter-centre reps for uh, Bowls and Eden for some time against Blucher and Blucher, father and son from Te Aratu. Who are not to be, I mean, you don't you don't take them lightly, Peter and Adam, but uh, certainly if you were to look at this game, Coonahan and Stevens would have been the favourites, and to be even 12-14 on the 15th end is a great effort from the Bluchers here. And that one's not quite holding up the way they wanted, but still not too bad, as you've said, better to be behind when it comes to the bowls than uh, too far in front. There it is. We see Peter here on the back end side. He needs it to rest that bowl. 
Oh, then to stop. Lovely little camera angle. See that green. Nice coverage at, at Browns Bay. They're all many Toto greens, Dave, which is a water weed. <laughs> I think that's your favourite uh, greens. Yeah, it's Just the only one. I love saying the only word. Only one I know how to say. <laughs> exactly. Oh, well, it's not Kikuya grass. No, that'll be interesting to play bowls on. <laughs> that would be. <laughs> yeah, three seconds. Yeah quite spongy exactly you'd have a few balls changing direction and uh, stopping and goodness I'd quite knows like what. to see it actually I've got a lot of Kaikuyo in my law maybe we could try and roll it down and see how it would uh, <laughs> how it would go what about on a no in all seriousness on a uh, almost a clay court That'd like be, a clay tennis no, court I'd but be, on a clay green I'd legitimately be fascinated to see that happen uh, as my understanding, it's almost what bowls was like a while ago. So when we used to have grass greens, all the grass would die, but they'd keep rolling the green. So okay. in the middle of summer, you were essentially playing on compacted dirt, which is why the greens were so fast, you know, 20-second greens, because you just got, you're just just playing on dirt. It would be interesting to see what it would be like on a, on a nice level yeah. uh, clay something. Well, I mean, there's the clay tennis courts hmm. and uh, various different types of clay, but that would be... I'd be, yeah, I'd be intrigued. I'd be intrigued to see. Legitimately, it would be it would be an interesting experiment to see. I suppose it needs to just have a little bit of well, clay by definition has a little bit of give, doesn't it? Because you don't want it to be the ball rolling forever. But they'd play pretty fast, and it'd be interesting. I'd All be right. keen. I'll just Pre and... previously we've talked about playing bowls on Eden Park. Uh, we're now we're talking about clay. Uh, now all we've got to think about is a a mini golf type thing. Well, that can be tomorrow's thinking. <laughs> no, I'm but legitimately, it's... yeah, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to do. Adam there, beautiful line, but just a bit short. A loose head here at this at this stage. Well, we could get creative and say nine hole golf, but nine hole bowls. Now that would be some. <laughs> that would. You'd have to make it just a, a three be, par. Yeah, that'd be cool too. I'd be happy enough. I'd probably be better at that than I am at golf, to be fair. <laughs> well, this one just curves around and uh, sits directly in front. Big end here. Another big That's end it. here. There's been so many of these moments for Adam. He's staring down the barrel. He's clawed, they've clawed themselves back to 12-14 on the 15th end. Now they're three or four down again on the head, and he's he's going to get one ball to save it with. And again, <laughs> I feel like this He likes is... to put that pressure on himself. <laughs> yeah, he's, well, he's, he does, but he stepped up to the plate every other time, so... Here we go again. Kearney just going to add a bit more pressure here. We can see there they're holding one, two, probably three shots. Well, you just got to really try and find uh, the bowls of the bluchers. They're almost not in screen. Yeah. Every shot here for Kearney, and, and he, I love this. Ah. Mike Kernighan has chased this bowl down to add pressure to the situation. Well, he's still got to go back for another one, so that yeah. takes time and yeah, just the, the whole impact that he's... Uh, yeah, he's chased it down because he knows that they know. And Adam Blucher here. This is a huge bowl in the context of the game. He's not far away here. Uh, no good in the end. Brilliant. Oh, it, it was actually better than what we thought. It was brilliant. It was nearly good. Well, it, but it, it looked as though it was just going to carry on. He got around on. Kearney's bowl and sat down for one. That's great stuff there from Adam Blucher. Under huge pressure too. What's that going to give him though? I don't think it's going to give him any... Oh, points. So oh. you think that it might give him one? It'll be close if we look at where the two meter mark is, and then against those two. Oh, that's a better camera angle. Uh -huh. I think he's holding. I think he's holding one. That's a great shot there from Adam wow. Blucher, and if Kearney and Stevens can't find a way to score on this end, they'll be a bit disappointed because they've outplayed the Bluchers yep. on this end. And they really have, and that that, that looked as though it was well gone. Yeah, had too much carry, and then just uh, sat there. I think we're going to see an aggressive shot here from Kernahan. I think they know they've got bowls left, right, and centre looking oh. to cannon it out square. He's close here, Mike Kernahan. Got oh, the bowl oh, clean. That's just, oh, superb. Just that is incredible stuff there. And he's Mike done Kernahan. that more than once to Adam as well. Yeah. And Adam just needs to say, to him, that was really mean. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> oh, but what a great shot. Oh, superb. What really a great nice. shot there. That there, for my money, is the winning of the game there for yeah. Kernahan and Stevens. Three, they now lead 17-12 on the 16th end of 18. Superb, really. When you get three off that, when you were one down, mm -hmm. but you can't turn it around to make it three up. Oh, it's a four-point swing, and you were um, you hit a bowl target. Yeah. 
great. I mean, you can't. Uh, there's yeah, not really the words, is there? It's just no. a, that's great stuff there. And that's, I mean, frustrating for someone like uh, Adam Bellucci because he'd done everything he could on that last one. Well, he salvaged it well, and it's sort of a result. Um, I mean, the reason Mike was able to play with that confidence is because they had the position on the head. They had second, third, fourth shot. Uh, and they might have been able to get that one in there. <clears throat> but certainly um, the Blue Jays would have been willing that ball to miss, and they would have been within a point of Coonahan and Stevens, but not to be, and 17-12 was the score on this, the 16th end of 18. And Alex, uh, we may just get a little update because we've only got a couple of vans left. Just about those other scores in the meantime, as we watch the first bowl come down. And of course, the jack is at the two metre mark. We're going end to end here. And this one just about touches, goes past. But uh, we'll get you to have a look at some of those, either some of those men's pairs or maybe the women's uh, singles results, just yep. to see if you've got anything there. Anything coming up? Yeah, I'll just have a, a, a quick little ramble. So Chris Lowe and Jordan King, who won the pairs here in Auckland, I think last time it was held in Auckland. Maybe the time before, doesn't matter. Short recently in Auckland, so they're one of the favourites. Have won two games out of two games. Um, uh, Lou Newman and, and Adam Newman, her father and son combination, that have quite well known, have won two out of two as well. Uh, Neil Fisher and John Walker, two out of two, which is to be expected. Defending champions, Lance Pascoe and Jamie Hill lost to Neil Fisher and John Walker. Well, that was the one of your pairs that you said to watch out for. I did say to watch out, and they lost 14 points to 13, the defending champions. In the meantime, we just have a uh, collision with the jack there, and let's have a look. Peter Bilcher is very slow bowl, this one. Might be too much on that one. Uh, in the meantime, there, Adam. Uh, Adam. No, Alex. We've got Adam, on the, we've got Adam on the screen. <laughs> Alex just to the left there. Uh, Gary Lawson and Tony Grantham, two out of two, as, as expected. Um, what else interesting has happened? Mike Galloway and Martin Dixon, other ones to watch out for, two out of two. So it's sort of uh, as 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 expected for those those players. And I'll have a nosy at the women's singles and get those to us before the end of this game as well. In the meantime, look at that. Just a perfect, almost blue line. Slight curve there. The jack's still exposed, but it is Peter Blucher. So having his last bowl. So the game that Taylor Bruce lost, the defending champion, she lost to Gay Horn from Myrangi Bay Bowling Club. 21 points to 20 oh, in round two. Oh, goodness. Just up the road, or just down the road, it is uh, Myrangi Bay from Browns Bay. So that'll be the first loss that Taylor's had in some time in a game of singles, I would suggest. So congratulations there to, to Gay. Yeah, quite a frustrating one as well because 21 20 hertz, even yeah. getting that close doesn't count for anything does it no it doesn't if, it, if points count it then okay it's you want to get as close as possible i know you need to get over that line mandy boyd one of the pre-tournament favorites two out of two leanne polson two out of two so far here we go with mike kernahan with his first and bring it around on the backhand side getting a reasonable amount of green Probably this only, looks pretty good, Alex. It does look good. I think they, I think they know how good Mike's last bowl was on the last end. I think they know. I think they know that they've sort of they've probably done enough here. Well, it was just probably knocked the energy out of you. Just seeing your oh, your good shot the from Bluch Adam Bluchers, yeah. and then just seeing bang, it's gone. And they've been fighting so hard, the Bluchers, to stay in, and they've kept themselves in that game. They were within two points, three points, two or three points of Coonahan and Stevens, and they've been under pressure the entire game. You know, Peter had to play a bowl early on when he was three down within a couple of inches. We see Adam here, first drive on his forehand. Looking for any result. Bang. Just got the ball square. Not quite enough. He was looking for a kill there. Wow. Uh, that was so straight. It was, was just perfectly straight. That was pretty quick. And Selena Goddard, two out of two, along with Reen Ballas, uh, two out of two. So pretty much as expected at the moment on uh, both the men's and the women's after day one. And for tomorrow... What's uh, start time we're looking at across across all the clubs? Uh, so it's an 8.30 start tomorrow morning. And for the streaming, we're looking at uh, approximately 11.45 again tomorrow? Uh, 11.45, so we'll pick the streaming up uh, tomorrow, and it'll probably be uh, partway through the second game or at the beginning of the third game of singles. We'll be doing and women's, women's singles Women's tomorrow. singles, yeah. Okay. Do we know who will be on this particular uh, green tomorrow yet? 
No. I mean, whoever it is, it, it won't matter. We've got, as you've listed off, a number of very talented, very good players that we should be watching out for. And we'll hope that you don't give them the commentator's curse, like I think you had with a couple of others uh, earlier. Thanks. <laughs> well, you're no. not wrong. I mean, you're not wrong. I can't. Uh... You, you did explain who could or should be in uh, in for a win, and then, well, it did quite eventuate. With the uh, women's uh, pairs, women's singles, that is, do you have to have, uh, are you playing six games or is it less to Yeah, it's six, six games over eight rounds. So you get two buys right. uh, where we ask them to mark. And I can tell you that the first game we're going to be covering is Rhonda Adams and Caitlin Thompson. Right, okay. And you've got the clubs where they're from? Uh, sure Rhonda's from Fitzroy and Caitlin is from Omokura Bowling Club. Ah, uh, Omo, yes. Where my aunt used to play at Omokura Bowling Club. Oh. Auntie Gwen. Well, say hello to Auntie Gwen. <laughs> there you go. And as we look back at this... At this head, I, I mean, they've gone for a kill already. You may as well. Uh, and the reason they will have gone for a kill is because they feel like they need to score more than one point. You may as well just have another proper nibble yep. of it. And if yeah, he I goes mean, jack in the ditch, while well, we score one, which is sort of one more point yeah, isn't yeah. going to do it for them. Uh, you know, just it would have taken them to thirteen, and yeah. then they'd need, oh, uh, you know, a big return. Oh, going for less weight. Must be looking to score just the one. It was nice sportsmanship there from Mike uh, Cooney and handing, handing uh, Adam his bowl. Adam looking to just draw the shot here. And I'll tell you what, he's not far away, Dave. No, that's a little bit unfortunate in the end. Not too far. And looks as though we're going to have a three at least at the moment. Eight points the difference now on the penultimate end. Yep. And that's... Uh, Pick that a one, sir. Peter suggesting the, I think there was just a little interaction there. Peter saying, look, should we shake hands? But Adam saying, might as well keep playing, which is okay. fair call. Cool. <laughs> so eight points the difference, second to last end. You want to score, if you're Adam and Peter, you want to score three points so that you get to play the bowls back towards the clubhouse. You'll be within f five then, won't you? Yeah, yeah, 15, 20. Well, it's always nice just to make things a bit closer, just... You don't feel as though you got beaten comprehensively. Yeah, if, if you can play the full 18 ends, that's always a nice feeling because it means that you've had to play the full 18 ends to find a winner. And weird stuff can happen in bowls, so at least you've had the opportunity for the weird stuff to happen. If you have to, if you have to play the last end, at least there's a chance that maybe you might magic a five <laughs> or a six or something. Whereas if you if you can't get to that, the game's over and done with. So they look for a three here, I think. Well, I think it's also been great that we've managed to get through so far. It's only an end and a half remaining. Uh, we managed to get through without any rain in this particular contest. Yeah, it's been... Certainly the wind's been there. It's been good and probably quite nice for the players. It looks, it looks like it's been a little overcast, but not that burning sun that we have seen over the last week or two. Auckland, uh, Bowls Auckland held their open mixed pairs last weekend, and I played in it, and it was very warm. <laughs> Too You're warm. still looking a little bit red there, Alex. <laughs> Uh, Precisely. Your complexion is maybe not the best thing. We're just going past the jacket. Yeah. Sunburn watching fireworks, Dave. And I, could, I can imagine. Uh, and how did you get on in that uh, tournament? Oh, we went out. We lost to the winners, which is something to, to cling on to. Uh, and other than that, an uneventful tournament. Okay, and uh, who was your partner? I played with uh, Jenny Stockford, who's playing the Nationals, right. uh, a club member at, at Point Chevalier. We played at the Bowls through five. Uh, televised league together when that was a thing that that was done. So we usually play the the mixed pairs and have an okay record at the Auckland the Auckland mixed pairs. Uh, who was the actual winner of that? Uh, Neil Fisher won with Trish Crooked and they, they defeated um, us a day earlier, but defeated in the final. Hmm. I mean, you can come back to whoever they uh, defeated in the final, but they were the overall winners. Two people, and you helped them get there. We did help them get there. We got close. We were, I think we were two down last end or something against Neil. And Trish, a formidable team. As we continue in the 17th of 18th, and uh, this is uh, post-section play of the uh, Somerset National Singles and Pairs. Of course, this is the Pairs. Tomorrow we have the Women's Singles on the coverage. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, available on the YouTube coverage. And later on it will be on Sky for the finals. Uh, I believe so. And uh, you can look out for... Uh, Mr. Macbeth, 
making a comeback yes. for those finals. Yeah, for the finals days on the 5th and the 9th. It'll I don't be... know how many comebacks he's had in bowls or anything, <laughs> but it's a lot. A few. <laughs> <laughs> Looking, looking forward to that. It should be good. Uh, simulcast on the YouTube channel and Sky Sport Nine, I think. Or no, pop up channel. Sorry, pop up channel for the for the bowls. But we'll we'll uh, put that information out into the ether a little bit closer to the time so that people can find well, where to watch the finals days. Four more days of uh, of exciting bowls uh, building up over the next few days, and uh, we've had a great uh, contest in this particular clash as well because at one stage it was just firing away Kernahan and Stevens oh, although Blucher yeah. Blucher did have a five zip lead but then it just Kernahan and Stevens raced away but it was just brought back and it was quite exciting the way that uh, their father and son brought it back into contention. They did they've done really well I've been impressed with the uh, the Blucher and Blucher combination and uh, the fight that they showed and I mean even to be fair it's not like Adam played a bad last bowl and then that they dropped their number. Adam drew the shot and Mike took him out, and that was yeah. what broke the well, back he of the, did that to the him back twice. of the game. Yeah, and uh, they've got a drive on the other <laughs> rink there. You could just see it <laughs> racing past at some speed. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly looking like this may be the last end. Uh, and if that is the case, yeah, as we said before, we'll be back here on the Bowls New Zealand YouTube channel tomorrow at about quarter to twelve uh, to pick up coverage of the women's singles. And uh, even before this is over, we should say thank you very much to uh, people running around there in the sometimes wind, sun, rain, <laughs> torrential rain. And uh, Tamara and crew, bang, almost. Ooh. Well, he hit, wait. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much to Tamara and the crew there. Yeah, certainly. Had to cover the cameras, uncover the cameras, weight them down, uh, try not to get too wet, try not to get sunburnt or blown away all at once. Let's have a look at Mike Kernahan here. The front on starts. How's yeah. he going to go on this one, uh, Alex? Where's well, he going? He's just uh, drawing as close as he can on his back end. Uh, they know they've essentially won the game here. Adam needs to go to try to try and kill the jack, I think, at this point. There's no position. You know, maybe he could, even if you bounce the ball back up the rink now, you've got no chance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he'll just be looking to, he may just, yeah, he's just saying, draw <laughs> he's for saying, one. Yeah, forget it, Dad. I'm just going to put it somewhere. Draw for one and shake hands, and we'll see yeah. that game come to a conclusion. But a great fight there from the Bluchers and a professional game played, I think, uh, by Coonahan and Stevens. And particularly for Adam Blucher, you know, still a teenager, just finishing school, we believe, uh, from the Teatro 2 Club. And uh, let's have a look for the handshakes now. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah. And, Dad, we did okay. <laughs> Pretty much. Not sure, Coonahan shaking the hands there. And in the end, it was uh, 20 to 12. So well done to all of the competitors. They survived the weather, albeit blustery, sunny, not quite the rain on this particular one. Well, look at those apartments going up there. We get their different view, quite a nice view. Uh, the apartments are going to get some great bowls action over the next, uh, well, next four or five days. And uh, thank you very much to sponsors uh, Somerset for the Somerset National Singles and Pairs at yes. the Browns Bay Bowling Club. And we do have the men's pairs, 205 entries. Men's singles, 328. Women's pairs, 88. And the women's singles, 127. Mm -hmm. Plus, we also the disability singles and disability pairs coming up as well. And before we bid a fond farewell to our viewers, Dave, uh, I think we're just going to cut to some highlights of the day's play uh, before we sign off.
And some great action there from the pairs, the men's pairs at the Browns Bay Bowling Club for the Somerset National Singles and Pairs. We'll be back again 11.45 with the streaming coverage and commentary coverage. And it will be the women's singles tomorrow. Some very exciting action coming up as we continue. Thank you very much to everybody We're around the cameras and around the sound. It's been difficult conditions at times. And let's hope the rain stays away in the future days. But no matter what, we'll keep on bowling and we'll keep on providing you the action. I'm Dave Worsley and thank you very much to Alex Reed. We'll come back tomorrow with more great coverage.